Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekender, your regular update on everything from across the tabletop gaming industry. On this week's show, myself, Justin, Ben and Free will be diving into a whole host of news, Kickstarters and an indie of the week, brimming filled with all the terrain that you'll ever need for any of your games or genres. On top of all of that, we have a massive prize for fans of Middle Earth. Free League's The One Ring uh, core rulebook, the GM screen, and the One Ring starter set is everything you need if you want to take your adventures in Middle Earth and play in Tolkien's world. To be able the chance to win, you need to pop a comment below, be subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, and if you can, share us around let your friends know it helps the channel out a lot otherwise you're ready to begin so sit back and relax because your weekend starts here Hello everybody, we are back once again to bring you all the tip-top gaming news from across the industry in The Weekender. And this week I'm joined by Justin, Hello. Ben and Free. No worry this week, two weeks was too much for him, it's taken out, he had to have a long lie down. <laughs> Did he catch the digital lurgy? Uh, you know, he, he said he, he opened an email he shouldn't have and got a virus. Uh, uh, I said that's how it works these days. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next evolution. We uh, have a jam-packed show for you anyway, so don't worry about that. And he will be back on your screens in the not too distant to blow out your eardrums and rupture your speakers. So that's all good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I I have been, you know, just playing with it a little bit when he's been doing his, you know, screaming it's in you. Just, just as me that's turning all the volume you. down. No, no. You see, I set it so it doesn't blow people's eardrums out, but I've been throwing like a massive echo on it. Oh. See, like he's, he's in the middle of a giant cavern <laughs> I, I want to go the other way Monty Python had a, a sketch they were never allowed to film by the BBC and it was just going to be a, one of their regular rambling sketches like the cheese shop but they would just gradually turn the volume down every couple of seconds and then turn it down a bit more on the grounds that in those days people would have to get up, walk over, turn it up, <laughs> think of their ears going. And then once, once they got all the TV sets across the country to max volume, then they would finish with some massive explosion. <laughs> and see how many TVs they could break. And the BBC went, no. That would have been amazing. I don't understand why, but they should have just not said and just did it. Yeah, you know. Maybe, that would have been the ultimate troll. Maybe, maybe we could do it at some point in the future, just on the run up to an of the week. Just have people constantly upping their volume, upping their volume, and then we deafen everybody. And then they can <laughs> then they can feel the misery that people have, have to read the closed <laughs> captions on YouTube <laughs> you know, on a regular basis. No, I will say work out what Eldari means in the closed <laughs> caption. Well no, the, the closed <laughs> captions on YouTube have been better in y- recent years because I remember when we first started, what was it? There was a line from John where it it read his audio, but what was it? It converted into the double hull boat has left the ship. <laughs> I mean, go figure. <laughs> the at, least, left hand now, so. at least that's that's fairly cognizant. Uh, <laughs> some, some of the things I've seen have, have not been uh, broadcastable. <laughs> Let's put it like yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, but, at, at least yeah. we get your sweet tones this week. We need to start putting a saxophone behind when you say it. Oh, you? yes. <laughs> Go, go full, uh, go full, lost boys. I mean, I, a graced up, uh, muscly saxophone player on a beach at night. I was thinking a little bit more Bill Clinton, but okay. <laughs> Either is good. They're both sexual animals. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I, I was thinking we just go full ASMR. We just have Jerry's hands tapping on a little box of miniatures and just him going, <laughs> India of the week. <laughs> How much noise does a silicon mold make? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ASMR uh, with Jerry. Yeah. Coming very big in Scandinavia. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but on that subject, shall we kick into the end of the week? Oh, yeah, yes. And this week, I'll preface the end of the week with the reason I've picked it. Because normally oh. I don't. Mm. Um, this is uh, a US company, been going 
for over 20 years. Just say donkeys here, isn't it? The guy who runs it, Craig, announced this past week he is winding down. Oh, okay. On the 31st of May, he's closing because he's in his 70s. And as he puts it, he wants some time to himself before they kick dirt <laughs> over him. So anything you see here, you can order. Any of the resin stuff, which is probably one of my favorite bits of the site. They do some gorgeous resin. Resin molds have a shelf life. You can maybe get 50 pulls out of a resin mold before it starts deteriorating. Uh, good companies replace them after 40 to 50. Bad companies will let them run into the 100 and then replace them when they've become so deformed that there's nothing left. He's gone. As they deteriorate, that's it. They're coming off the website. The plan is to sell his range to other companies. So okay. at the moment, it is together. After the 31st of May, you may still be able to get these things from other people around the world or the US, depending who buys his range. But it will be a game of find the thing. So at the moment, it's all <laughs> together, and you can get it. You are now on a ticking clock. You have been warned. And with that, it's time to take a look at Ixon's Creations and the Indie of the Week. And it's a whole host of sizes, scales, and genres, as is my mm. want in life, uh, because I do these things. Started, I want to say, in the 80s, uh, but people keep telling me 20-odd years ago wasn't that long ago now. Um, so, you know. Uh, <laughs> but it started with 20 mil Vietnam, uh, okay. and then has expanded okay. from there. Mm -hmm. So there are a few things I shall note before we go any further. Craig's Marketplace is where Craig is getting rid of his own stuff. Ah, uh, right. Now, that may seem like, oh, he's he's got some bits and pieces he's looking to get shot of. Yes, he does, however, have somewhere in the region of 2,000 reference books wow. for the historic stuff. Wow. And he's going to be slowly feeding in. So as these sell, new ones will be going out there, and they That's cover right. a whole host uh, of of theaters and wars from across the ages so a lot when you're looking through here and you're going oh he's got aztec stuff there will be books in here somewhere on the aztecs or if they're not up at the moment they may appear in a week or two so it's worth sort of popping back in as he thins the herd shall we huh? say um and some of these books are out of print and if you go looking for them via the medium of the the flea bay the amazon and the rare book sellers like Abe's books and things like that, you'll find out exactly how much they cost. I mean, there's one on the Siege of Budapest, uh, which is Warlord did a um, theater campaign book for Bold they Action did, on yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is a, a fascinating little snippet of uh, the Eastern Front, the unknown Alamean. I mean, whole host of things, including library, oh, he's, got, yeah. he's got Tigers in the Mud. I have to, I was complaining about this the other day. This has just been reprinted, although that price is actually very good for $20, because buying that secondhand, it was about 75 to 90 wow. pounds. Wow. Um, but that's Otto Karius's uh, narration of, of his time in the, uh, in the war. Impressive. Anyway, yeah. that's, hey, that's just an aside. There's 2,000 odd pieces of literature uh, about various aspects of warfare <laughs> that we'll be dropping in there, Fair along enough, with yeah. along with things like old kits that he's never got round to building, um, figurines, castings, and uh, even the occasional painted model as well. So that's Craig's marketplace, and definitely worth a little nosy around. <laughs> that, that's really clever of him because he knows he's getting older. He knows he has seventy odd years worth of collection, yeah. but eventually if it comes down to his like family they might not know what it is and not know the value of it and might yeah. end up binning something that no 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 oh. that's that's got some value to someone and i would rather see it go to someone who's going to cherish and treasure it i like that idea yeah oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely a way to go um we have our 28 mil fantasy i think we'll start with this uh because you know i like my fantasy mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not the boss okay. of me right darcy from Kildare. Uh, <laughs> Oh, River Bluff's already been emptied out, but Eldritch Horror still has stuff in it. So you see here, Cthulhu-esque monsters and cultists. I mean, there's a lot to be said for having tentacle monsters. Yes. Um, I was looking for tentacle monsters recently because I need bloodworms for my Night Stalkers for Kings of War. Now you found them. <laughs> now I found them. <laughs> I just want a base full of tentacles. Yeah. What can I say? Fish bite hooks. Um, I, I, you know, 
I'm easily amused and I know what I want to go after. We, we have always said that Lloyd does his shopping on the weekender. So, you know, <laughs> there's no reason why you can't do the same. Oh, that, no. That's true. <laughs> Ghosty girl full of gully ghosts. Look, a Lloyd <gasps> shot. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Peter Buck, of his big God. ass. Yeah. Everybody. His posture is terrible. Yeah, but he's he's well fed. He is. That's Bless true. him. He's, he's like a naked Gamorrean guard. That's uh, <laughs> not something I thought I wanted in my life. <laughs> and I was correct. Yeah. Oh, oh, one of our group is actually Nathar-Hotep. starting up. A How do you say that word? Soon. I say it in the Hotep. There's certain Cthulhu-esque words that I read. And I can't even. Uh, the whole uh, point, the whole point of them when uh, Lovecraft was writing them was they should not be pronounceable. So if I anybody ever goes, they. "You're you're pronouncing Cthulhu incorrectly," you go, "No, I'm not," because there is no. There, there are people who try and and go, but the the whole mortal mouths cannot make uh, the sound as good. It's like the world's most evil banana skin coming at you <laughs> like Cleopatra. <laughs> oh, that would be so good. And now you cannot unsee that. Oh, it's got to be much, yellow. Jerry. I appreciate it. Yellow, bright yellow and black. That yeah. would be awesome. Yeah, with the, with the, the black spots. Which, to be fair, yeah. for the Dark Pharaoh, yellow and black's perfect. It is, sorry. Uh, true. You know, so, I mean, the coloration is grand. We're all fine here. How are you? <laughs> Have a quick look at some of the, uh, oh, so the bits and pieces Dungeon from Dungeon everything. Worlds. Nice. Yeah. nice. yeah. And, and this is really what stands out across. I mean, the miniatures are nice. Uh, and there's a good selection of them for various conflicts and, and scales because it goes from 28 to 15. And I think there may even be sixes kicking around somewhere. Okay. Uh, but there's a whole host of resin for all the main scales as well. So you can get fantasy tiles. I like that little mining card stuff. That's just oh. where you need to have Indy slam into that and fly <laughs> out the other side. Um, but I mean, you can get bits and pieces. The uh, the Festung Europa, uh, Fortress Europe, World War II stuff in 15 and 28 is gorgeous. Um, nice stone tiles, which are good mm. for basing as well because they're relatively set. They're also but very that's... cheap as well. Tavern table tiles are quite yeah. nice as well. Hmm? The wee tavern table tile. Uh, I like mm. that. Look at that little tiny really stack stone nice. pillar with a little jug on it. In the, middle of a, in the middle of a room, why would somebody not come up and lift that jug off that? <laughs> hmm. <Tavern. laughs> It's it's just the way people do things. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you can see, there are many, many pages of this. Oh, I'll just gotcha. skip on somewhat wow. and have a look at some of the more interesting things. <clears throat> some things are reproduced, so the Adventurers Pack is also in the Fantasy Miniature section, although since it's here, I'll have a look at it. Um, because people, when people browse websites, and I think some people have caught on to this, they'll go looking for something for a dungeon, and then they'll get bored and won't go any further into it. Oh. We shall be speaking more about the dinosaurs when we have a look at the primeval range. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, that's cool. But well, everybody likes a bit of lizard man goodness. Have actually Saurian fella on the back of some sort of raptor thing. A spicy dino rider. <laughs> Did you call it a spicy dino rider? A who? A what? Here we oh, have. Aren't you? Paladin fighter wizard looking not dissimilar to me on Sunday, and uh, and poor squire having to carry all the shit. <laughs> could be a blacksmith, could be Thor, He's got a hammer. That is true. Uh, yeah. You see him at the back of the group frantically repairing weapons as they get broken <laughs> in a fight, just like it's almost ready, it's almost ready. <laughs> <laughs> What's quite nice about the dungeon stuff is that they've you can buy the individual components or you can buy just the larger set then, which is quite cool. Yeah. So you can be like, oh, I'll buy this Dwarven Mind bit and then I'll get the entrance separately or something just to add on some extra bits and pieces, which is nice. Which is um, nice. I mean, even if you're not planning on building a mine, building a, an actual dungeon crawler dungeon, mm. having something like that, that you get a big block of three-inch polystyrene oh, yeah. and, yeah. yeah. and shove it into it and shove it into it, and the detail work, because I mean, carving a hill, anybody can do that with a bread knife and a bit of sandpaper. Hmm. Um, I mean, it's not particularly difficult to do that, but some people yeah, won't, that, that... can't, or, you know, it's handy just to have it for all the price of it. It's not going to be exactly breaking the bank to stick yeah, that in the front of a bit bucks, of Molly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that little bit of an extra detail or a flourish on it can really make it. 
And there you can see the mine entrance again wow. with a bit of uh, minery behind it. I would assume all of that then has been hand rolled the little sections of the yeah. wall and oh, stuff and then oh, put oh, together into the original molds and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It is old school. Oh. As, That's so nice. As I like old school. Shame, shame Warren's not here. <laughs> oh, mushrooms. Oh, <laughs> look at the mushrooms. Don't. I've just, oh, all I've been doing is 3D printing mushrooms. <laughs> Shroomage. There's a, a shrimp pit. Oh, uh, wow. I, hopefully there's not something terrible in the middle of that. Or alternatively, that started out as a, a hole for uh, feculants. And over time, it's just not been emptied. A mushroom and pit, just yeah. become a mushroom pit. But <laughs> it's that Write your own story, the, kids. That is a goblin birthing hole. You just see little baby goblins oh, yeah. coming out of it from the spores. <laughs> yes. that, that's why I there's a hole just the wee buggers had to dig out. She's like, <laughs> a mushroom well, and goblins are big mushrooms. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's a, a little entrance between... Sections of tile. Nice. There's not That's much, nice, not much room to get in there. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh Jerry, you're such a fun guy. Oh, oh, oh here we go. <gasps> Can't oh, get rid dear. of us. We're oh, not going away. Wow. Anyway, so <laughs> that's your little sort of fantasy esque bit. Um, if I skip on a little bit, you'll see other bits oh. cast in. Nice. house as well that's nice I like yeah that. i occasionally does bits pre-painted as well oh, okay um yeah so sometimes you'll see stuff that is pre-painted i don't know who was doing that whether it was himself or somebody else was painting for him and that's going to continue as well but I mean, maybe he just gets bored and just sits and paints some of the stuff yeah. sometimes well, 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 some, instead of wasting that yeah well some of it's probably painted for the website and then mm. afterwards you're left oh, with it they're great I'm they're fantastic critical. i do question the emerald oh. color there. <laughs> Although this may just be a colorblind test for people. Yeah, uh, or true. the man himself might be colorblind and someone said, Oh yeah, yeah, that's the emerald person. Yeah. I just well, never told you him. Put the background does, does say Ruby the up there though. Yeah. <laughs> you put blue and red together, I don't know. Mm, no. <laughs> I mean those are those would be quite nice for um Arc World, because Arc World uses lots of crystals for yep. like game components and, and all sorts of different things, objectives and as well. So yeah. that'd be the, cool. I, I nearly grabbed them for something like Moonstone. So after I've dropped oh, yeah, yeah. I would put them down as a marker for yeah. a little bit of prettiness. Yes. Sorry, Oh, that's nice. really cool. For student with heads. Yeah, it's a oh. try triceratops but <laughs> oh, that's particularly good. I, I did enjoy that, Justin. <laughs> I was wondering if anyone would twig it. That'd be very good as a capstone. It way, would yeah. be. Uh, but on top of like a, a, a monolith, what do they call it? A pyramid. obelisk. Pyramid. An obelisk or, or a pyramid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pyr pyramid. Because py pyramids were all capped with um, a metal plated capstone and then mm. finished off really nicely in, in like the, the docking stone. rig for the aliens. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That Exactly that. What you said. Yeah. Anyway, you could, you could also set those up as like magical nodes on a ritual site surrounding like yeah, a pillar yeah. or something. That'd be nice. That'd, that'd be a cool idea. Ooh, oh, oh, well, all this stuff is fantastic for caves. Isn't oh, it? it's mm. so very far away. It seems like it's perfect for anything you're doing free. I know, <laughs> no, I know. I could just say, oh wow, well, this would be great next to a troll. It's brilliant. <laughs> I'll pop into primeval as our bridge between fantasy and historic because I'm good well, like that. Yeah. Thank you kindly, Jerry. So there are 15 and 28 mil versions. Of oh these. my god! Oh wow! Oh, no, dinos. I've got. Why is there a rhino? Why is there not? It's a why woolly not? rhino. <laughs> no, no, there's a regular rhino. Yeah, there was. Well, well again, why not? <laughs> it would also have been like twice the size of a of a, yeah. of a modern That's rhino. So <laughs> awesome. The, the nice thing about this is. I have a lot of Burning Sands Conan stuff in 15mm. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is currently at CP Models own that now, if people uh -huh. have been playing along at home. Um, so being able to get a bucket load of, you know, head-butting dinos in 15mm. Oh, my God. Smack, smack, smack. I always love these. My favourite dinosaurs were Iguanodons, because mm. they were native to Europe and, and uh, Britain, and they had little thumb spikes for stabbing people. For stabbing oh, there you go. Iguanodon there. Yeah, but I also then liked uh, the Ankylodons because uh, Ankylodons were all about just smashing things to pieces with their big tails. Very cool. That Megalodon's very cool, yeah. yeah. This one. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I like the way it's coming out the side. 
I Put like Jason that. Statham on a surfboard or something <laughs> just to think of it. Here, here's the thing. I would pop that into my dystopian wars table. Oh, yeah. Just have them coming up as yeah. a megalodon chasing, like, and a, a, you know, one of the fleets. Oh, my God. And you could go shark had, hunting as a scenario. Here be monsters. Have, you could also have the enlightened have got their hands on one and put like loads of gribbly bits over it and like yeah, made it all yeah. like weird and mechanical as well. Yeah. yeah, you could start doing some kit bashing. Yeah, there's an elf with an Indian rhino. Nice. <laughs> I mean, if, if she's a hunter and she Just, needed a companion. Yeah, everyday yeah. combos. Yeah, it's certainly a different combo for an elf <laughs> and a hunter. You know, you generally think squirrel, fox. That's yeah, the, you know. it's the same. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd I like him when he was a baby. He got big. Uh, is there a tabletop game out there that is just about dinosaurs? Not like cavemen and all that kind of thing, but actual dinosaurs. Yes, dinos. Where um, you just like I ha- I make a couple of dinosaurs in like a herd, and then you have to play out scenarios where you like hunt things down as dinosaurs. That would be amazing. Pretty there's, cool. there's one I remember. It's a, an abstract board game called Evolution, where it's you actually oh, yeah, evolving yeah. different yeah. creatures, so you can Ooh. go like dinosaur style or mammalian style. Run, Zebras, like, run. Zebras on the run. <laughs> the Velociraptors are after you. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't run fast enough. Oh, my eyes. The graphic detail. <laughs> A story. Oh, God, he's literally got no eyes and teeth. They really, yeah, really the, took everything. The, the soft bits go first, and oh. people just like teeth to put under the pillows. A story in three they're, bits. Yeah, too. they're really nice. But those are sweet. sweet they're gorgeous, candy. yeah. Man. I want to make. I want to play a dinosaur-based. There is there is no way there is not a dino-based tabletop. Re- there Rebel must be. Rebel must have made one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there anything with one-page rules? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Just like you know, it's like a. You could even do it as a solo thing, couldn't you? Because you'd be like, I play as a predator. I have to hunt down enough prey by the end of the scenario to keep me going, kind of thing. That'd be cool. Yeah. Well, if you want dinos, you've got drowned earth, haven't you? That's true as well. Yeah. Although humans and other things keep getting in the way of the dino goodness. That is true. If I could just play raptors in Drown Earth, that would be... I want to be a clever girl. (laughs) I mean, you could do it that the raptors are hunting dino T-Rex or something. Yeah, yeah. Both are available. Like a one versus many giant hunting style thing. Mm. Because they do those diners in 28 mil as well, don't they? Is, yes, those yeah, 20, 20 and 15. You can subdivide it and see yeah. exactly which is in which. So do you get uh, the same uh, models through 15 uh, and 28, or do they vary? A lot, well, they're split when you go into it. So right, yeah. I don't think the whole range is available in both scales, but it's not far off it. Um, <laughs> here we can see some Aztecs, including a Jaguar Warrior. Oh, Wow. Aztecs getting a bit of a resurgence. The they really are, yeah. yeah. That looks like the insane. world's first onesie. Yeah, I'm just it basically like is, yeah. It, it is, although un, unlike the common ones today where they're based on Tigger and made of felt, <laughs> this required the warrior to go and find a Jaguar. Kill it. Kill it up, yeah. Skin it in one it piece yeah. so it could wear it as a suit. Yeah, and then cure in it a, and then turn it into a suit. In a very much Ted Bundy kind of way. Uh, you know, it's a little bit Sounds of the lamb. <laughs> Is it, the same, very is, it the same, of the is it the same premise behind why they did that as to why sort of like the First Nations, the Native Americans did that kind of thing with like animal spirits and stuff? Yeah. Was it sort yeah. of like a, imbued with the power of the Jaguar kind of thing? Very much so. Um, right. oh. And they had a different, you know, there was Jaguar, Eagle and a couple of other yeah. uh, animals that they, they both thought were mystical and in some cases were aspects of specific gods That's so cool. you, you can almost yeah. think of them as as like, like um, zealot fanatics for that particular right thing. Yeah, yeah but apart from our aztecis we have a little world war ii fellow pew 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 pew, pew. All right, well, that's the noise know. he makes uh slightly more in the way of the first world war with some austro-hungarians stuff, yeah. yeah which you often don't see nice quite cute in the uh, 50 mil especially I mean they did start the war and yet <laughs> so rarely do we see them kicking around the place that's true yeah, yeah. grenade on the side's nice mm. Let's have a look at our uh, MG I like it they're very similar to my I've some 20 mils that are very very similar in sculpt I wonder if it was the same sculptor 
Sorry, are these were these. I digress. Here, or were they, no, no, they're, they're, those are um, 15s. 15, okay. 15 yeah. for the Austro Hungarians. Titty tiny. Uh, but I would like to have a look at the resiny bits. Ooh. Yep. Biblical. No, Warren, needs to look, Ooh, uh. Warren needs to look at the biblical stuff. That's for sure. Again, it would work quite well with the primeval stuff. Mm-hmm. But Egyptian oh, runes. Oh, Syrian winged bull and everything. Oh, it's cool. These are resin. That's very cheap for resin. Well, it depends on the size. So, for mm. example, there's oh, a, okay. a three story building yeah. for 60. <laughs> um, they were like, all about the Mycenaean. It is, does look like it comes in segments, they see. Yeah, oh, yeah, you can, good you can yeah. play within. Uh, the Egyptian pillars, 14, are quite nice as well. Nice. I like the detailing on the bottom because people often go just use cake pillars. And I say to you, yes, but finding plaster cake pillars these days is very difficult. And they look like plaster cake pillars. They're all very, <laughs> they're all very Ionic or uh, Corinth style Greek, whereas I, I want my Egyptian. Anyway, I digress. You may not have noticed. Move along. Here's the ruins <laughs> at Nineveh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. All the Lamassu, all the time. Yeah. This proves aliens because they wore wristwatches or something. I don't know. I don't do it, <laughs> I don't do it as well as Warren. That's my vlog. <laughs> something, something, conspiracy theory, yep. something, something. <laughs> the walls of Troy. Mm. Hector. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. I love that. I like that it's got the interior detail as well. <laughs> yeah. And then the doors will swing us. That's neat too. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. It's it's a thing oh. of gorgeousness, this, this, this. As long as you can sneak a horse through there, that's fine. So I'm, I'm sure you I'm could. curious about some of the medieval stuff. Are you? Mm. We're medieval. Medi- medieval. <gasps> but also Mesoamerican, since we had a look at the Aztecs. Ooh, there's quickly. Viking as well. Ooh. Yeah. Very quickly. They do basically everything. <laughs> yeah, I saw sci-fi too. Oh, the calendar stone. That's neat. That's gorgeous. Oh, wow. That's also, amazing. that statue's oh, wow. like, come give me a hug. Now you're cursed. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might not be cursed. Yeah. You might not. I mean, you probably will be. There's an Olmec head. Nice. Wow. People who want to go First Nations. Mm, Olmecs. Also, if you're playing um, Mythic Americas, these are perfect. Oh god, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like if you if you're diving into that from Warlord at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic ruins. It's just it's the breadth of and this is really why I wanted to feature it before some of these things start disappearing. It's yeah, the yeah. Breadth yeah. of continents and and scales that they cover. Um you're not just going, Oh, there's a, a the umpteenth Saxon wheat barn, you know. Yeah, but if you're <laughs> wanting like stuff for your tiny saga. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Tiny saga. Well, my tiny saga's all in the Crusades. Ah. Uh-huh. So it's 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 all kicking around Utremer. I think that's quite nice about this though, is that you can get a lot of I think this 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 kind of stuff seems like it works very nicely with people that make their own stuff. Mm. So you have people who build the hills and forests themselves. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they need things like now I need to get to work on buildings. Rather than casting my own or something like that, I'll just buy some of these little pieces and just sit them in and around what I've already built, you see. so Also, I would say if you do a lot of scratch building, when you get a wooden, like a, a three or not 3D printed or a, an MDF building and stick it down in the middle, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's too perfect. Yeah. Too angular. The lines are too straight. Uh, I get that. It doesn't fit in. Whereas these are handcrafted, so they get they give off the appearance of the rest of your terrain. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all little 15 mil versions, although obviously we've got the bigger as well. Yeah, let's go into that 28 mil one. Archer sticks. Oh, with the Grody half fort set as well. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do like a fort battle. Oh, that's I mean, gorgeous. They say medieval for that. That could equally work for Roman. They could. Oh, yeah, for one yeah. of their mile yeah. Yeah. Or even Northwest Frontier or... or um, Ooh, you could do a scenario. Canada. You could do a scenario where they're in the process of building Hadrian's Wall. Mm. And this is one of the makeshift 
force that they've My set force. up. Yeah. Just and you're trying to hold off the the barbarians from the north who are coming down to, to destroy your work. Yeah. Steaks for your ditch. Yeah. Everybody likes a steak. <laughs> Tower. Oh, there's some unarmored Vikings on horses. Those are nice. Aren't they? they are nice. Supply your own spears. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why people have brass. Now they're playing so. rock, paper, scissors as well. Oh, well that's yeah, true. Yeah. Could, be, could, be, could be as well. <laughs> Quite like that squad. Apparently, in, in uh, rock paper scissors, you should never go scissors. Really? I don't why? know why. Someone was uh, someone was just saying, ta- uh, as far as the tactics of rock paper scissors go, apparently you don't pick scissors. So, but, yeah. no, I was it? Mark. Was it um, Hannah Hannah Fry? She did a paper on it. Uh, apparently, the best opening uh, move is rock. Yeah, yeah, because it's but, easy. But, it's also easy to do as well. Very few so. people do it. So, you know, this is where it all started. 20 mil Vietnam, two very right. little simple ranges. You've got your uh, US infantry. Hoorah. Exactly. He definitely is going hoorah at the back. <laughs> <laughs> and the Viet Cong. Oh, that's nice. I like Including, that. I quite like the ones who are popping out of uh, foxhole traps as well. Yeah. So yeah. not everybody's. Uh, Some throwing grenades right and everything as well. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's where it that's all nice. began. Yeah. Let's pop back to here. Well, before I get lost in all the resin. It, it just keeps going, doesn't it? It, it does. <laughs> pop into figures. Well, if, if the guy behind it's like 70 years old, he's had time to build a massive library of stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, ooh, Viking casualties. Oh. Viking boat makers. Viking <laughs> civilians. Oh. Civilians is good for games like Saga, for example. Do you know how Lloyd bought mm, all no. of the Drabant range? Yes, yes, he did, yes. Do you think he'll buy all of the Ackerson range? <laughs> it depends whether or not um, we tell him. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So mm. give me a second. Lloyd, give me some money. <laughs> Don't mind me. Talk amongst yourselves. Look, here's some sci-fi. You just tell me what you want me to open in sci-fi. Oh, cool. Uh, sorry and recon bike. Yeah, what's one of those? That looks Good like from... Start, you could definitely paint that from uh Maybe that's the speeder Lloyd is looking for. Yeah, yeah, I think it might be, yeah. <laughs> I was quite happy with that. Uh, it just doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah, Ray Combat, that, wow. Very old school. See, I that would is... nearly pe- paint that up as like a pizza delivery bike. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Sci-fi pizza delivery. I, it's got like and a he, hog's head on it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know he's he's zooming through the undercity, and it's just like okay, must deliver pizza in thirty minutes or less, or I get shot. <laughs> yeah, or I get rebooted. <laughs> Star, he's a big mech looking mech fellow, Ooh. being all mechy. Oh, he's got that kicking around these days. All the mech. Uh, What's Karen that? Recon set? Wormick Warriors. And space goblin. I want to see what the space goblins look like. Oh. Wormick Warriors. Look at them. What the hive. If they're careful, they can all turn to the side and have like four different guns on this. All they'd have to do is just lay <sighs> a wormy broadside. Yeah. <laughs> I like those. Like me some mechs. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can have mechs going up against worm warriors. That'd be cool. That's how you get rid of them. I mean, you wouldn't want to fight worm warriors. Can I see? Can mano I see the mano. space goblins, Jerry? There's a sargon as well. I noticed there's there's quite a lot of. Um, Babylonian naming in here. Yeah, yeah. Sargon, Ishtar. Anybody else? Space Goblins. Big uh, old ears. Oh, look at the baby one on the back. <laughs> it feels like an 80s Saturday morning cartoon lineup. Yep. I was going to say, everything we've looked at in this so far makes me think of like Saturday morning cartoon show titles. Yeah. yeah. Like you can imagine Sargon. Being the name of a character in something <laughs> that has like an incredibly poppy and amazingly animated intro, yes. and then yeah. the rest of the show is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, like Chase like, and the Wheeled Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that. But no, the the storyline for this one, Ben, is simple. So you've got your space goblins who are living on their little asteroid, happy as you like, and then the unknown Sargon lands trying Mighty to Sargon. put them off. <laughs> Yes. And the the pilot's just like some mega corp pirate go or pilot going, 
I am Sargon, and I have come to kick you off this planet and evict you. And every episode, <laughs> it's just Sargon attempting to kick them off the planet. <laughs> yeah. And they're just going, no, we will beat you with like the most minimal tack. The, the intergalactic landlord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'd love to I say, yeah, for my TV rent arrears. I'd, I'd love to see the opening. Please pay or vacate the planet. It would explain why there was a baby, baby goblin, baby yep. space goblin. It's for guilt. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like watching Camp Table take it away. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> space. They're great. That's a great, great range. Really mm. cool. Really quirky. I like it. Uh, yeah. Oh, they're nice. Yeah. I saw it's as, saw as got a like very almost Lewis Chessman look. Yes, the, doesn't it? Yeah. That's nice. I saw that on the front. It had like a little section specially, especially for the painted stuff, I think, as, mm. as well. So there is, there is an option immediately there if you want to go and check that out as as well as we were talking about before, which is quite nice. But yeah, um, but yeah, what a what a neat little selection of stuff. I Very am blo- awesome. blown away by the dinosaurs because dinosaurs are never not cool. <laughs> I know. Uh, very yeah. very true indeed. So, like I say, you've got months, uh, and hopefully somebody will pick up the master moles and the like off him, uh, and we won't see the last of the Ixens creations. Uh, but otherwise, enjoy your retirement, Craig. We're going to move on and have a look at some news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the b- f- News. <laughs> all right, we're back for the news. And where are we kicking off this week, Benjamino? Uh, so we're starting things off this week, um, looking at war games who have expanded on their epic battles Waterloo. Um, selection. Uh-huh. Uh, so just as they did with uh, their American Civil War range, they have designed a whole bunch of additional plastic kits that will sort of be sort of able to build on what they've already provided as part of the starter kits and things for the Waterloo campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, both the British and the French are getting themselves some extra gubbins to play around with. Uh, the first set, as you see here, is the British, and this is the new Highlanders and Rifleman set. Um, so if you were worried about painting tartan on a 28 mil miniature, <laughs> just do it on a smaller one. <laughs> I, yeah, but I, I would like to so say k- kudos to whoever's done this. Exactly. It, it is actually the various tartans. It is, yeah, yeah. So it's not just one tartan and then they've just cut and pasted this three times. Yeah. Oh, no. Look at that. No, no. Because people no. go, well, they're not in the right tartan for the Black Watch. Uh, yeah, because they, they say what's coming. Yeah, so, they have specifically designed this so that you can make each of the different regiments, I think, haven't mm-hmm. they? So you, you've got all the different options there, which is quite nice. Um, in addition to also having, obviously, the Highlanders there, you've also got the riflemen too, so you've got your skirmishers um, darting around and shooting people, uh, which is pretty awesome. There's also some artillery and the brigade commanders in there at the same time as well. So if you wanted to use this as a, a little bit of an aside to your main British force, then you've definitely got that option there, which is quite cool. So, That'll finally shut the people up about the uh, rifles in line from the go. corset yeah. so they went all oh, right fine we'll skirmish them <laughs> well, yeah. uh, i believe john actually said they were always planning on skirmishing them and then oh, he followed and then he followed it up with the fact that out of all of the battalions of riflemen only one was actually deployed in skirmish order at Waterloo. <laughs> the other three were all deployed in line well, go, and yeah. never left line yeah. essentially flecking the v's to all the grognards in I'd the say that. Uh, in the comment section. I'd say that's perfectly warranted. And yeah. also, yes, I'm going to say 15 mil, even though they're 13.5, but I'm going to say 15 mil. Uh, as well as that, uh, we've also got the additional miniatures for the French as well. So you've got mm-hmm. the Imperial Guard. Uh, which Speaking of the of, Grognards. Yeah, the which, uh, very much so. Uh, <laughs> which uh, split up into the middle and the old guard. Mm. Um, so if you want to throw those around in your games, you've got that option too. Lots of very Back burly right. gentlemen. Exactly. Hey, day does a lot of moustache. You know, you've got to have good facial hair to join uh, yeah. the old guard. Right, so, hang on. If, if, if we ever play this, I have to shave my, my lower beard and just do the big mustache yes. for it. Yep. Yes, yeah, of, course. Much so. well, of course. Of yeah. course. Why even ask the question? Exactly. I will. Uh, in, in a little bit of an aside to this, <laughs> I was reading through the rules for turn of 28 uh, <laughs> yesterday. Very similar. And it has an entire 
sort of army that you can play as, which is themed after the old guard. Good. And one of the stipulations in the rules is that your miniatures must have fine moustaches. They don't do anything in game, but they look amazing. So <laughs> I thought it was really cool. <laughs> do I get a reroll for having a fine moustache? Uh, well, well, you yeah. should. I, I think don't. we could let you. Yeah, for but, the commitment. Um, yeah, yeah, but but these are great, and it's nice that they've sort of split them up so that you can use them in, uh, as the different regiments and stuff. Uh, I believe there is actually some um, flag sheets in there as well, so you can use them to make. Oh, the that's that's excellent. Yeah. Cool, so. Uh, Especially so. if you, I mean, if you want to hold off the Prussians, uh, then you need at least one of these old guard, because mm-hmm. yeah. uh, yeah. that that'll secure a flank for you all day long. Very much so. Yeah, but yeah excellent stuff. That yeah, it really is. They're yeah. pushing more and more out. I hope it, in time that they expand beyond um, Waterloo itself. Uh, mm. I know, obviously, some people were questioning why Waterloo. Oh, because it's incredibly well known. If Massive people are conflict, not already, yeah. <laughs> if people are not already in there um, playing Napoleonics, then it's a, it's a good entry point because it's all the nations in one tight little bundle uh, over the course of a day. So you can, and it's still such a large engagement that you could almost go, I want to play Prussians against French, or I want to play Dutch, or I want you know you can pick a section of the battle and still have. A fairly significant chunk on your tabletop. So, but yeah, push on into the peninsula after this. That's what I'm saying, John. Yeah. You're listening, you listen, John. The other good thing about these as well is obviously it's because they're all available in the plastic. Mm. Uh, it's very easy to get these set up and ready to go on the tabletop. There's not much you need to do in the way of cleaning or anything like that. So, you just get them, get them sorted, clip them off the sprues, get them down the table and start playing, which means, which is great because it means that those people that have been afraid potentially of have to buy things from lots of different areas in order to play at this scale potentially for uh, their games of the American Civil War or Waterloo. Hmm. You're going to effectively get all of it in one place, especially if you are interested in just playing out this particular battle or these particular scenarios and things. So it's very cool. And I, I hope they, they expand things and they take the Epic Battles franchise in a different direction. It'd be nice to see them do Epic ancients. Battles Ancients. I think that would be really cool. Um, so, yeah, some we'll some American Civil War or Seven Years? Or well, they've, already, Wars. they've already done Civil. Oh, have they? Oh, uh, they started. They could with civil, do independence, and all that but they could do independence. They, yeah, yeah. you could that do could things like that. But definitely, uh, no. I, I think if you're going to keep in the vein of the tiny fighting men, move away from black powder, dive into the Hail Caesar, start, start you know, chucking agents you know, out on the yeah. tabletop for <laughs> plenty of plenty of famous uh, Roman battles out there to fight. And if you wanted to go even further down the line, you could also do, you know. A hasting set. Not that I'm angling for them to do a hasting set, but there we go. In six to fifteen mil. Exactly. Yeah, that'd well, be amazing. You totally, it? totally are. You yeah. do love the you love the battle of hastings, don't you, Ben? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> well, the Battle of know, Fulford is also very fascinating as well. But, uh, we, <laughs> we all we all have our you know little peccadillos, I suppose. Mm. Uh, free. Take yes. us away from Waterloo. Okay. Well, fans of the Vampire Masquerade franchise are going to be happy to know about the upcoming mega release. Right, okay, I'm going to say mega with enthusiasm because it is capitalised. So I moved. <laughs> it's like, mega. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Blood Feud. So it's not only adding one aspect to the franchise, but towering over different aspects. Interesting. RPG mechanics, mm. top of the board, LARPing your way through a bloody mess of tabletop LARPing. warfare with miniatures. Okay, oh, so yeah, this okay. is mega. Okay, so what makes it so mega? So the player count <laughs> is listed from four to 32 players. So players oh. are going to need to band up into factions to pick their side to progress. So Very two cool. players are going to take the reins of the narrative, okay? So they're going to be storytelling, while others are going to work in teams and promote their clan. So they can join vampires in the night time of the week with the gangrel, the torador, or the ventru. Or if you feel comfortable in your human meat suit, you might find yourself fitting well over the good guys at City Hall or even the Mafia. <laughs> so you get a wide world of Vampire the Masquerade, all in depth floor into one massive title. So if you're going to gear up for a game session with Blood Feud, it's going to take roughly about two hours to get through with your giant party. But each faction, players have got to work in teams to rival or against the politics that's going to be happening against the rival clan. So territory is important. Yeah. You're going to be battling for reign and dominance. So things are going to get really political uh, with a range of abilities dished out to each player. Each individual member is going to play an integral role for their faction. So they're going to progress, earn new abilities, 
collect more resources. Yeah, so it's not just the game that is mega as well. The box is huge. The box is massive. So it's chock a block for the cards, balls, tiles, tokens, clips, and a shed ton of miniatures as well. So if this was actually up on Kickstarter last year, so if you did get a chance to miss it, it's coming to retail soon. So um, considering the longevity of the game and the diversity contained in it, you can pre-order the uh, title here in the UK for about 140, 160 quid or pounds, uh, as, as most uh, of you know. <laughs> it reminds me of, um, <laughs> there's a bunch of people that do mega games so that this is basically what this is in that in that mm. respect where they like set up so for example one of them was like an XCOM mega game where everyone played different factions some people played the aliens and that kind of yeah. thing and you essentially played on a massive board game in like a school hall or something over the period of a day or something I like that they kind of condensed this little, this little bit down to like that two hour experience which makes this feel like as you say very good for conventions Cons, yeah. I think it would be really fun Yeah, is that 32 players can play the game in two hours because that that's kind of mind-boggling to me. It yes. says in one sitting, 32, it would take two hours in one there sitting. There you go. Yeah. But so. if you're playing at a convention and you're LARPing with 32 people, it might. every person will or every group will have their own GM. You won't all be sitting around the same table. Well, mm-hmm. if you're LARPing, you won't be sitting around tables at all. You'll be going and annoying yeah. the other comm members. You can do what you do. <laughs> Brought up different rooms and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you'll go uh, between the two. Yeah. yeah, so you'll you'll interact whatever way the LARP is set up. It's it's certainly fascinating. Mm. I'm worried that they're trying to do too much, too be, much all, all things for, to all people because yes, board game makes sense, um, but then also pushing into the RPG and then the LARP side. It's it's how much that box is actually going to be used. Mm-hmm. If you're not into I, yeah. if you're not into LARPing, oh, I'm not terrible idea. But I wouldn't mind playing a board game. I uh, I have every you might be able to see them. I have every vampire book and dark age book down there that they mm-hmm. ever released up to the point they destroyed the game. Uh, Requiem <laughs> destroyed the game. You know it did. You know it destroyed it because they've gone back to the masquerade. Gone back to masquerade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how badly they destroyed the game. So, but but uh, I think they just ignored it. But when you're putting so much in the box, if people aren't LARPing or if they're not into RPGs and they're just mm. looking for a big board game experience, will there be a lot of dead space in that box? I, I or, think- or, or have they tried to, to make it so integral that it doesn't matter if you're not going to be doing the LARPing and the RPG that mm-hmm. ev- you know everything can be used for the board game and that sort of... I, I reckon... Sorry, go on, Justin. I'm I'm actually kind of wondering, depending on like team sizes and stuff, I wonder if there's maybe someone who is de- designated as the person who is playing the board game aspect of it and just dealing with their clan, like liaison the for their team. And- yeah, yeah so- but there's like one person who's a LARPer who's coming to them saying, so here's what's happening, here's what we're doing. Put yeah. that down. I, 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 if, if, if it, yeah, if it's like any other mega game, it'll be someone who'll, have, who'll be in charge of it and you'll have other people who will then do the role play bits and yep. then feed back to one central thing and that kind of thing. They probably designed this so that you, well, from what they, what you talk about with term, the contents of that box, hmm. it's effectively like a kit to play this. Yep. So I bet you can probably scrap bits and things that you didn't particularly like or want as well, which is quite cool. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this, whatever these are, which are, presumably these are the kindred orders, but the mm-hmm. other side, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, there's no reason why that couldn't be used for LARP. No, because you've got your teams with Just gives various. You what you need to do, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and likewise, those would equally well work for a board game. Yes, um, favoring because, different aspects. Yeah, because yeah. The, the, there's nothing on there that is locked into one or the other. Uh, RPG probably less useful because you're not going to have multiple teams within a group. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Every group is six individual players uh, pulling against the GM, uh, but theoretically, they're one group. Uh, so yeah. I, I mean, cool though. It's a nice idea. It is, yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, I mean, putting us in the eating. So I suppose once it it finally lands and people start to delve into it, we'll know exactly how well it it sort of uh, crosses the genres and the boundaries. Well, I can sink their safe into it. Eh? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I didn't yeah. use one vampire pun. No, oh, well, no, you're, no. Yeah. say nothing that casual. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. 
uh, fascinating to see. So if you missed out on the Kickstarter, you can uh, keep your eye for that monster coming to your local game store. Yes. Speaking of monsters, mm-hmm. and you've already hinted at this one, Benjamino. Yes. Well, uh, Black Slide Studios. So we talked about Turning 28 earlier, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that game came out around the same time as uh, Sean Sutter was also working on a game called Sludge. And we talked about both of those in an Indie of the Week uh, not too long ago, actually. I think it was sort of middle of last year. Um, The Sludge rules are now out there in the wild from Sutter. Uh, They were in Blaster Volume 3, so if you want to go and get those, you can do. The idea of the game is it's a black powder fantasy-style epic clash on the tabletop uh it sort of mixes together sort of napoleonic type themes uh, alongside medieval elements as well um so you've got knights in shining armor going up against guys with rifles and all sorts of different things in there too there's also lots of twisted monsters it's also a world full of mud blood grime dirt mm. rust everything you could think of Gritty. well the game has been primarily focused on the idea of it being a kit bashing experience kind of thing mm-hmm. so you dive in and you basically Choose kits from, for example, the Perrys or something. Uh, a little bit, as you can see on the left there, right? actually, that's uh, mm. maybe some of the Ration Core stuff yeah. um, being turned into the different miniatures and you sort of kit bash it all together. But Black Slot Studios wanted to try and help out with this and create something that was sort of like an entryway into the game. So if you want to, you can now pick up their new resin miniatures for the Keth Battalion, which is one of the factions within the game. So this was designed alongside Sean, uh, who did all the sculpting and that kind of thing as well, to create these amazing characters that you see here. Uh, you can effectively buy the entire army, as you see there, that massive battalion, including that huge hulking uh, monolith of a gentleman with the massive helm and the hammer. Uh, and that very arty shield as well, which I thought was quite nice. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. very uh, Russian icon, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. Uh, or you can buy each of these uh, options individually and just mix them in alongside things that you maybe have already been kit bashing, which I think is quite nice. Um, as I say, this is a really cool game and world, and it's nice to see that Black Sight have sort of latched onto this and started creating a lot of the different miniatures for it as well. You get really, well, you get across that sense of the the theme and the aesthetic they were going for with this kind of mix of sort of crusading warriors alongside the bedraggled peasantry carrying their uh, black powder weapons into the Mm. midst of battle. Uh, It's a very, very cool range with lots of quirky things in there as well. You've got these amazing riders as well, which I think are really awesome. I love them. The Tarlock riders there. Like dark Um, chocobos. Yeah, they are like dark (laughs) chocobos. Uh, one of the cool things, you, I, I believe if you get the big bundle, you also get like a mounted general on one of these as well, oh, which is quite nice, nice, which is pretty cool. So, so yeah, this is just sort of like an entry point, as I say, from Black Sight to kind of enable people to dive into the game of Sludge without feeling that they had to do a lot of kit bashing and all that kind of thing as well. And of course, there's nothing stopping you chopping arms off and all sorts of different things and making them into uh, yeah. a different army if you want to as well, which is quite cool. So, I, I like the fact also, I haven't had enough of a look at it, but they have that Ottoman Turk aesthetic yeah. uh, and the fact that they've chose to go with that faction first rather than go for another western european centric fantasy human army uh is also quite nice they the keth crusaders just remind me of ram man from he-man i'm just saying <laughs> it's, it's the flat head and then the flared bucket yes. uh, yeah so you know keep yeah. them away from smashing head first into walls mm. uh, uh but, yeah yeah, I was, I was going to say, it should be noted that as well as the actual miniatures, you can also buy some of uh, the initial terrain rage from them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. So the folks at uh, Black Sight have done, because they work on um, MDF stuff as well. They, they have done for years now. They, they've started working on some terrain too, so you can go and pick up buildings and everything that fit into the aesthetic of the world of Sludge, which is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that came in uh, Blaster Volume 3, yes. which is always worth picking up if you're just interested in gaming in general, um, because they not always tied to specific games. Blaster is just uh, a little art collective of games designers doing what they want to do. Uh, and sometimes it matches stuff they've released, like the Gamma Wolves or Gaslands. And sometimes it's it's just, I think this Entirely would be a fun new game. Games. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. a game, and I can't be bothered trying to find a publisher, so yeah. we're just going to put it in this article. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely worth checking those out. Yeah, the Keth Battalions. Fast Very cool. Great. Great to see, and also interesting to see what they do next. Exactly. I do like the yeah. fact that you can still go on ahead oh. and stick to the... Um, the conversion parts that they already do if you're interested in just kept bashing your own stuff keep the old skills alive kids 
You don't want to be coming along in a hundred years and going, oh, everybody was 3D printing and then the <laughs> internet ended and nobody could 3D print and nobody knew how to use putty anymore. Oh, I can't, I, I have lost the ability to use a modeling saw. So. Yeah, <laughs> that, that type of thing. Do you mean I can make a hill with a Stanley knife and some you know, like <laughs> density like foam? What? Yeah. <laughs> it. Car- cardboard box, masking tape, that's all you need. You can make yeah, everything you ever need in games with that and a newspaper. You're done, dusted. Jobs are good. Anyway, stunning stuff in the yeah, sludge. Right, so. uh, yeah. What is next, Free? Take me away from the mud and the dirt. <gasps> Take you away from the mud and the dirt and into some fantasy. So last weekend, all over my social media, Steamforge Games were announcing their next collaboration with another massive IP. So considering they took in multi-millions from the Kickstarters last year, like Resident Evil and Monster Hunter World, you can guarantee this one's going to tickle the fancy of video gamers. So RuneScape is not just getting one, but two tabletop titles. So if you're familiar with the world of Gelenor, the upcoming Kickstarter campaign from Steamforge and Jagex have got you covered. So mm. the first title was announced was the board game. So it takes one to five players in a quest field adventure. So players are going to make their way across the game world. They're going to build and utilise old school equipment, be able to upgrade, cook up a storm, invest in character development, get to know some NPCs, while thrusting forward into adaptations of classic quests from old school RuneScape, which quite a lot of people are going to be familiar with. So we've been told we get to engage with some old favourite characters as well. So I really hope that we do see the wise old man when exploring it. But um, the second RuneScape title to be announced and heading over Kickstarter, which I'm more excited about um, than the board game, in all fairness, it utilises the 5e wall set, and that is the tabletop RPG. So players will explore and venture off into mm-hmm. each wide corner again. So it's really exciting me because the world itself is already established. The law is already there. It's it's really, uh, the possibilities are endless to what you can stumble across and what you'll be able to fit into. I knew RuneScape existed. Yeah. I played it, it was, on dial-up. <laughs> it, it was before I started getting into games because, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I tend to do things all-consuming. Yeah. Uh, so so it was a friend forced me into Warcraft and then that just sucked all my life. Oh, uh, yeah, years. that would do, yeah. But I, I avoided RuneScape. So is it, I know it's a, an MMO RPG mm-hmm. in a similar vein. I suspect. Is it? Yeah, is it are are much, we looking yeah. at standard fantasy tropes, or is it a, a different sort of type that, of fantasy? It's his first standard fantasy. It's similar to World of Warcraft, not similar to World of Warcraft in a way, but it's standard MMO RPG. Go out, adventure, quest, uh, dungeon crawl, loot. Yeah, your usual spammy quest and adventure, but. Uh, it's just uh, really cool to see something that I loved so much when I was younger actually translate over to a tabletop adventure. And as I said, it's the, it's the RPG one that gets me because it's already, the world's so huge. And I'm, I'm not up to date with RuneScope at all. Like I haven't played in years and I used to play a lot as a kid. Um, so it's really cool that they're reaching out to old school players and bringing in some of the old characters that I knew. And I really do think that it will fit into 5e flawlessly. So. It's quite a cool concept to be able to bring over, um, especially. I, I play the board game, absolutely, but uh, I do. It's the RPG that I seem quite excited for. But, here's, um, here's something for you, Free. Go on. Uh, if you're feeling nostalgic or maybe if anyone out there is curious, mm-hmm. I, if I remember right, RuneScape is free to play now mm-hmm. on Steam. So anyone who's maybe curious about this could maybe dive in there and start getting a little feel for it. Quick, suck my life away again. Not this coming. <laughs> oh, where sorry, my life sorry, disappears. Sorry, sorry. Like, go play your own state. But it's, it's, it's really cool to see. But it's going to be heading on Kickstarter at some point this year, like a lot of their uh, Steam Forge titles have been. Um, it'd be really interesting for me to see what kind of items are used, what kind of equipment is there, if they're coming up with anything new, just to see if it's a complete translation over or a, a different interpretation. Mm. It's going to be quite interesting, um, but it would be nice for me to play on a different platform with a bespoke character and venturing out in RPG. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's one of those things when they, they start doing the the MMO RPGs, mm-hmm. often you would look at it and go, well, this world is amazing, fantastic, but then you're limited by the technology. You know, you're, you're limited by not being able to jump or being killed if you go on the water. 
uh, you know that that type of thing. You, you can take all stuff. you can you can take all the bullets in the world in Vice City, but the minute you step into two inches of puddle, you're dead. Uh, so being able to push it from there into just a standard RPG and play with your friends and not be limited by the constraints of what somebody else is doing programming wise yeah. is good. It's also handy if people aren't role players already because you can mm -hmm. introduce them introducing somebody to living greyhawk is a whole other cup of tea for dungeons and dragons because there's a wealth of story that they don't know it's like anytime you have a bespoke setting it's one of the reasons why i probably default to cthulhu more than anything else mm. because it's our world just weird and people oh, well, don't, but wrong <laughs> and people don't need to know the but weird part because they'll be introduced to that as they go yeah but, but just telling people you're 1920s america People know kind of what that is. Having the background of of a world that people may have explored, obviously you get the retro head and the nostalgia head mm -hmm. coming in, but it means you're not having to go from brass tacks. You're not having to go, right, well, this world has two suns. Yeah. Uh, and the moon only comes out once every three months. Uh, but when it does, all the world goes purple uh, and makes you magical. And, and you know, you, you don't have to spend weeks explaining what they're getting themselves into because they, a lot of people already have a background in it, yes. um, which is good, having something from existing IPs. Yeah. That it's how they transcribe that, I suppose, yeah, without, I it just, without it just feeling like generic fantasy Copy RPG with RuneQuest title on the front of the cover. Yeah, that, I understand that. that. Yeah, so. yeah, quite interesting to see come in. I, I do feel it's quite nice when video gamers, so for example, quite a lot of my friends who play Board Doors Gate came over to RPG in, um, and they saw a completely new experience um, in Dungeons & Dragons through just playing similar RPGs equivalent on a video game um, and translating over. It just, as you said, breaks the rules and allows mm. you to access a lot more. So it be. I really just hope it's not a translate over, um, and we have pretty much the same experience, but onto you know a, well, a tabletop. If, if, so. if, it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't represent me sitting in the wilderness for four hours mining adamantium, then it's not real RuneScape. So no, <laughs> no, I suppose not. When I'm when I'm eleven. <laughs> <laughs> having flashbacks to the Angoro creator and just doing laps yeah. for thorium <laughs> <laughs> really it really was and someone you know, steals it, your bloody it, adamantium it, and you're it's, it's just, it's just the the you're just almost pellet, there you're about to click and it's just like no the f no yeah anyway oh. moving away from world of runescape mm. and taking a dive back into the historic spin mm. yes because Farlock Games have announced another in their Blood and series. <laughs> Jerry's very excited about this one. So obviously we've had Blood and Plunder, which took us into the golden age of piracy and beyond. Mm. We had Blood and Valor, which took us to the mud and trenches of World War I. Ah. But we will now have Blood and Steel, Clint. Victorian Age Combat. Huzzah! Which is going to be having you, uh, as you could imagine from this image here, taking on the likes of the Zulus in the Anglo-Zulu War as the British, if you like. You can even head further afield. You could do the American Civil War, the, Ameri the Mexican-American War, the Spanish-American War, mm. fancy, or the Second Semin Seminole War, uh, yes. or the Maori War, which I am. Super excited about it. that one. Sounds amazing. I think the Mari Wars could be really fun to dive into. That would be really cool. Uh, but yes, this is going to be a, a new new game from them uh, that kind of builds on the success of what they've done with Plunder and Valor in the past. Uh, a lot of the mechanics are going to be very similar to those that have played previous games. So that's a nice way for you to sort of segue into something new in a different time period. Uh, one of the other cool things about this uh, as well is that obviously a lot of these periods have. Uh, an extensive wealth of miniatures available to them already mm. from different creators. Um, a lot of people will already have lots of um, Zulus lying around, maybe from Warlord Games collections and that kind of thing. So what they've done is they've decided that we're not going to, they're not going to make any miniatures for this one this time around. Uh, it's all going to be miniatures agnostic. Pick whatever you've got in your collection and bring it to the tabletop and start nice. fighting. I am basically seeing this as license for War Games Atlantic to go, hey, did you want some Maori warriors? Let's make some Maori warriors. <laughs> I I, you know what? I don't know if Maoris have appeared on Hudson's lists of I things that they they're now currently should. working on. <laughs> Everybody, go, go, go. Quick, yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't bother by the time you see this, I will have already messaged Hudson. <laughs> I, want to, I want to see some hacker-styled Maori warriors kicking ass. Yeah, cool. Clearly you want... Uh, 
you know, a unit commander who looks like The Rock. Yeah. Or well, my mom, you no. Know. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Two reasons. <laughs> different country. Second reason, different culture. Ah, Technically, that's the same apologies. reason. Twice. But I thought it was important that we... we <laughs> All right, my bad. Over. My apologies. <laughs> we'll say uh, there is, there is a uh, Mari game out there already that does an exquisite range from New Zealand. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, it's the same people who do. Oh my god! Yeah, it's actually. I think it might just be called Mary. It's the same people who do primeval. Yeah, uh, um, or primal. Uh, great stuff. So if you are after yeah. some for the Mary Wars, that's good. I know Damien and Edgar have been tinkering away with this. So um, Blood and Valor had a, a like a bidding system for initiative, where it was also your command points, and it tracked down, and that was different from. Uh, Blood and Plunder. Blood and yeah. Steel is going to have a different initiative system as well. So they're not just reskinning the same rules into different periods and going, awesome. now you've got these. Um, so that they've they've got like a, a dice-based initiative system based on your units. Uh, but there's also hidden agendas as well in the game. So you cool. won't you won't know exactly what your opponent needs to do to win mm. uh, when you I love that. kick That's into so them. Cool. Yeah. Uh, adds so, narrative to an or yeah. like a, a game which is nice you've, you've got a, a, a decent core in the, the blood and I, rules I will also point out I just typed in for the sake of looking Maori miniatures into Google uh, and Empress make them uh, Eureka oh, make them Empress Old Google. Glory make them yeah. uh, loads of yeah, loads of different re- uh, people make these which is pretty awesome i got to say the Empress ones look amazing <laughs> oh my god the Empress, in, in the Empress ones might be that New Zealand company they may be, and they've just got them over there, yeah. But because they do a few other things. Uh, weirdly, the Mexican wars that you were talking about, um, 1898 miniatures do a gorgeous set, and Empress stock them in the UK. So if, if you're in Europe, obviously, you can just go directly to the Spanish, and if you're in the UK, you can grab them from Empress. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I might be looking forward to this. I might, really have, cool. I might have already talked to Damien Edgar about um, getting them on to do an interview about it. Perhaps, yeah. maybe. I'm not saying I have. <laughs> I will also point out, uh, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about it as well, uh, mm. they have got a Facebook group that they've set up all about it. So if you want to dive yes. in and follow along with the creation of the rules and maybe get some inspiration for your new projects or see which companies create miniatures for these these wars, you can definitely go and check that yeah. out as well. So. No, it's, it's, a, it's a nice group. The mm. Blood and Steel Victorian Age Combat 1837 to 1901 <gasps> group. Um, <laughs> that is its full name. Over a thousand members already, and they've only been up a couple of weeks. So yeah. clearly, there is a glut of people wanting something different for Colonial War. Um, so. I, I like the fact that I can chuck my Colonial War stuff out with a variety of rules and have very different games and gaming experiences with them. Um, so yeah, it's it's worth hopping in there, and uh, I, it's already been play tested in the wild. Although there are not play test rules in the uh, the Facebook group. You just have to uh, hold your hold your wish on that one. Uh, but I know they've, they've taken it around to some of their local conventions um, in and around the Florida and South America region. So, or Southern American states, let's be more accurate. Um, I'm just going to so, say it again as well for, for you know, they're, they're pro- maybe, maybe they're watching. Hey, All Games Atlantic, Maori Warriors, Maori. plastic. Hudson. Hudson. <laughs> uh, uh, honestly, if, if Mike's watching, it's just like, you know, I'm wondering, will they ever break away from historical? You know, do blood and magic or do blood and slime for some sci-fi? That would be interesting. Oh, all the blood. I guess it depends what falls into their, like, what they love, because they tend to do stuff mm. based around the things that they're really passionate about, don't they? So, yeah. be interesting, though. Mm-hmm. Sure. Ooh, so, blood, the, the, blood and rust, and do, the, like, a, a, a post-apocalyptic pump. one or something. Blood and yeah. Yeah. Or blood, blood and grow. <laughs> I know they... I know they play well. Rufus and Kai certainly play a lot of Kings of War. I think Mike may do as well. Ooh. So, so yeah, they they certainly play fantasy in there. Blood and I. Yeah, and if they want to do a horror one, it would just become blood and blood. Blood, blood and blood. blood, 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 blood. <laughs> a big part of blood. <laughs> oh well. So there you go. Uh, we have one last news story mm. for this week, picked specifically to annoy Lloyd. I feel Very much so. Yeah. Uh, Take it so- away, Ben. By the time you're watching this, the Games Workshop Warhammer preview will have already been out. So all of this may be old news. <laughs> and there may have been even more fancy things revealed by this point. But we're going to be talking about the stuff that's going to be available this weekend from Games Workshop for 140,000. So we are turning ourselves over to the uh, the greater good 
and following the path of the ethereals, uh, the greater good. Uh, uh, So we're not... (laughs) We're not up in the countryside. We're actually in distant planets fighting as the Tau Empire because they're getting themselves a new codex that's going to be available as both its standard version, the one on the left, and the full art limited edition version, the one on the right. Uh, You're also going to be able to pick up a new combat patrol for the Tau Empire as well. This was previewed a couple of weeks ago. We looked at this in the weekend or two, but it's a big, chunky set, this one. Uh, Should be pretty good to get you started. As the name would suggest, it gives you a combat patrol ready force for you to use on the tabletop. Uh, so it's kind of been themed around the idea of you just getting started and basically use this and get cracking on the tabletop and have fun with it. Mm. Uh, it comes with the new plastic ethereal. You've also got the fire cadre leader there as well, which yeah. is pretty cool. I love that guy. Uh, although I horrendous lo- rules. Yep, very much so. Uh, he's also um, give, been given that lovely knife that he's what say, he used for. Yeah. Is he about to stab somebody with the scabbard still on? Well, considering the Tau don't really know how to do anything in close combat. Oh, that explains it. That that explains why they are so terrible. They've had these knives made probably by probably (laughs) by slaves that they've you know forced into the gulags, made Uh, made by human slaves from conquered worlds. Yeah, Yeah. there you go. And Uh, at no point have they worked out to take the cover off. Oh, I was given this by a slave. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah so the set comes with the ethereal the cadre fireblade the fire warriors the stealth suits which are pretty cool and also the ghost kill battle suit as well which is the big chunky boy at the back um there's also going to be the tower ethereal is going to be available separately so if you've already got a large tower force and you can pick up this ethereal and throw that into the mix as well nice. and there's also dark stride as well which is pretty cool uh, Dark Strider, sorry, uh, who is the, another one of the slightly more renegade uh, members of the Tau Empire, who actually had a, a had a pretty badass battle with the Vindicare Assassin at one point. So I was reading about this. So a Vindicare Assassin was sent to go and kill some of the members of the Ethereal cast uh, and, and take them out. And I believe there was, it did manage to kill one of them or something. And so Dark Strider then chased this Vindicare Assassin across the world, across this battlefield, only to get stuck into a deadly uh, fight with the Vindicare. Um, the Vindicare managed to massacre all of his squad, but eventually Dark Strider was able to shoot him and take him down. Uh, although he never re- he never reclaimed the body. Uh, so a lot of people think the Vindicare Assassin is still out there in the wild and probably going to hunt him down and kill him himself. Uh, but it shows off that Dark Strider is pretty freaking badass, uh, up there with the likes of... Um, Commander Farsight as well, so very cool indeed. Oh, I should say, the Law Masters from this week on Warhammer Plus, very good. It's about Tau battle suits, and it talks about the eight who are the bodyguards of Farsight. Oh my god, that that is some cool ass law. I'm slightly sad that I've given away all my Tau to my friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and here's here, here's the good side of that, Ben. You have the chance to buy more. Oh, no. I mean that is true, but I I I have my eye. I'm focusing on other things. He's shiny. He's shiny. Oh. Look at your Eldar. Look at it be pretty. Don't the listen to the Eldar. Be pretty. The Eldar. Look at it be pretty. But anyway, oh, stop it, Justin. You're in my mind. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's also going to be some new data cards and some new dice. Uh, the data cards will be out of <laughs> out of use probably. They won't be very useful to you in about three or four weeks when they change all the points. So don't worry about that. <laughs> Uh, the data cards with the stratagem, stratagems on them, though, will be very handy, so make sure you pick those up. Uh, there's also the themed dice as well, which sell out very quickly. So if you want those, make sure you're on the appropriate sites in good order. There's also some Space Marines, but nobody gives a crap about those. Oh, I guess you've shown them. All right, yeah. No, so there's a new... It's a Primaris. So new, yeah, there's a new Primaris captain in Gravis oh, there. Oh, look, he um, has a... How many skulls? Fist. He has a fist, a sword, and a wrist mounted bolt there. Oh, mm-hmm. and look, just for a little flavor, there's a servo skull. Yeah, I can exactly. see four skulls. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, five. That's, oh, that's, that's the optimum amount of skulls. Um, so, yeah, he can be armed with the power sword, a chain <laughs> sword, uh, the teeth of terror relic, which is from the crusade rules as well. Uh, you could also actually apparently just arm him with two power fists if you wanted. So if you wanted to just actually rip apart vehicles, then he's more than capable of doing that, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's also the Primaris Ancient that's coming out as well. Uh, now been gifted, as I think we've talked about in the past, with a power sword. Uh, previously, he had a bolt rifle, which is great, of course, but as the standard bearer walking alongside your commander, you're probably going to get into the fighting quite quickly. Probably helps to have a melee weapon. Uh, so thankfully, they've given one to him now, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah. Some ex- extra Space Marines to go with your other Space Marines that you probably have in your collection. I know I have quite a lot of them, so there we go. Uh, some good stuff there for the forces 
on the Force Cast Millennium. I should also One point out dead friends up on top there. Very true. Yeah, mm. that's Barry. Yeah. Mm. Barry, Barry the the banner. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, in, addition, on point yeah. there, <laughs> in addition to the new stuff about the Tower Codex everything coming out, there was also a little sneaky thing that I wanted to put in because, you know, Lloyd might watch this and be like, oh, I wonder what I can do with my Kroot. They're making it so that you can have an entire army of Kroot now. Admittedly, you can only choose from Shapers, Kroot Warriors, Kroot Hounds and Kroot Oxes. So four things. But they are <laughs> putting together... Uh, the ability for you to have a proper crew army and the crew have been given a little bit of a boost as well they've been made a little stronger and their weapons have been a little bit more dangerous at the same time too which is pretty cool it'll be a little bit like playing a little bit more of a finesse army I would imagine because they're probably going to get ripped to shreds by pretty much anything else that comes their way but if, you, if you're interested in doing just a crew force they do have that I will point out there was an old white dwarf magazine Many moons ago, mm. I had an entire list of crew army stuff in there that you could yes. make yourself it even had rules for when they eat things, they mutate and change their bodies. Mm. So you had Kroot that had eaten Tyranids, Kroot that had eaten Orcs, and you could use those to make different styles of uh, Kroot in your army, which was pretty awesome. That's um, cool. They've still kind of got it with this, yeah. but just not as good. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm missing the uh, the giant Kroot budgerigar. Um, what? Forge World used to do World, a yeah, model, yeah. and it in the last Kroot rule says, which was in a white dwarf that I own. That shows how long it's been <laughs> since that's actually been out and about in the world. Um, let me see if I can get a picture of Is this. It called the Norlock. Was that it, it was called the Norlock, yeah, yes. It, yeah. And it looked like this. And I'm going. There's no way that's they like, don't. Whoa. There's no way they don't still have those molds somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. And Forge that's World. Cool. The whole point of Forge World is to do the side of the road stuff that you know they normally don't want to put into mass production um because it's not a primaris lieutenant <laughs> why not just get them to if they were going to do this crude list why not just go look lads dig that out mm. you, it's a resin cast you could literally do it the day you get the order in you don't even have to have a stock of them in advance just see whether or not people it, yeah. actually want to see yeah. on the tabletop again i know lloyd does because we <laughs> talked on tuesday had a little staff meeting on tuesday <laughs> and everybody else left to go to lunch and then me and lloyd just kept talking toy soldiers because we do and he went off to have a look at gw stuff and while he was there the little box popped up going oh you're on our website would you like to t- chat to us and lloyd immediately went yes i started asking them questions about crit <laughs> and then two days later that appeared on the yeah, community no. page, and i'm just <laughs> going they're just toying with you now, look. Yeah, See, I, I have toying. to wonder, has that conversation happened and someone's went into the back of the warehouse and went, actually, we've got three pallets of that sitting. Can we do something <laughs> get rid of it? We can use that space like... We well, have we have a bus worth of towel shapers yeah. that we need to shift. So. Uh, well, I mean, I think, is some of it still fine cast and metal? So the crew hounds and the crew tox are resin, so fine cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, crew Field shaper cast. is still in metal, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and then obviously the crew themselves are in plastic. So. plastic. Okay. But uh, as I say, this is happening on Friday, <laughs> Friday evening. Who, who we may have, the lots of things may have been announced ahead of us, but we'll do. So you think it could be like super early April Fool's joke? Yeah, maybe, maybe even more stuff is on the whole, way. We'll see, whole, so. A whole one-off crew army. New Vespids. Because every time they release new Vespids in plastic, because every time they release a new Tau Codex, they rejig the Vespid sculpt where the crit languish in, or languish in the background, uh, being, you know, annoyed like Lloyd. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> here's a new Vespid. Enjoy yourselves with your sting wings. <laughs> <laughs> right, that wraps us up for the news. Take a little swish, and when we come back, we'll dive into some 3D printing. Yeah. Right, so now that I am actually bulk printing a forest, um, I tend to spend a lot of my time on my mini factory and Patreon. Mm. Um, so because I am a patron over at Cobra Mode, I get access to all the news and monthly releases, Cobra Mode, we mentioned last week. So this month, there's been a collaboration, and that's what I love about Patreon, because you tend to find people through people. Um, and I got my hands on a particular miniature called the Whirlwind Shadow from a place called the Great Grimoire. Grimoire? Grimoire, there you go. Grimoire. I got there in the end. Grimoire, the Great Grimoire. Um, so although I was 
really excited about a Witcher-esque bird. Um, my <laughs> eyes for sure lit up when I went to their store. So uh, I opened their store. No lesson in this one. I can't find one, actually. <laughs> so uh, you might, you might find one. Uh, Great Grimoire just brings in the kind of twist of dark fantasy, gothic horror and Ooh, yeah. fairy tales oh, all wrapped up in a beautiful and dark. This little girl with the uh, stuffed bunny is about to be attacked by all the hands mm-hmm. on the bottom right of the screen. Oh, all the hands. Yeah, out of uh, out the wardrobe. Oh, best way. <laughs> but uh, there's wealth of different products to choose from, whether mm. it's a dark fantasy twist to Little Red Riding Hood or Pied Piper. You can head out to sea with some gritty pirate warfare or just generally enter the dark and mysterious. So uh, their minis are wonderful for printing and to dioramas. And they've got a really interesting take of like the sweet fantasy and turning it into something like extremely sinister, as you can mm. say. So they've got a, really a centaur Jason Voorhees. <sighs> I'm always it's a fan of, of, I want to say, faceless masks. Mm. I mean, that looks like Court of the Owl from Batman. But, it does, yeah. yeah. But anytime you have a, a featureless mask i suppose that's probably a better way of putting it uh it, it does just look terrific mm. i like the word grid on it as well one mm. step away from looking that up and i'm like talking it. about the uh <laughs> mask version of loki not the disney princess version <laughs> of <Loki. laughs> the <homes. laughs> i've got the homes there but there's go cool. there is so much on here that you have to look at that it's a badass centaur. That's mm. a really yeah. angry centaur. Quite a beefy centaur as well. Mm. Um, but from your fantasy universe up to whether you want to look at piracy or... But I really like the uh, fairy tale side of stuff mm. as well. Uh, taking a grim map, but oh, it's beautiful. Um, and I was really drawn to this as a fantasy uh, fantasy head anyway. It's a beautiful range of, of uh, centaur. Mm. Which you know is a weird thing to say, but if anybody's ever gone looking for just plain really centaur, hard to find centaurs, it yeah. is incredibly <laughs> difficult to find <laughs> just nice plain centaur without mm-hmm. anything weird going on. Uh, I also quite approve. I approve of the hooves again nice. because I spent some time talking to Lloyd, and Lloyd was showing me some uh, Death Corps of Krieg 3D sculpts, and the horses looked like they'd be made out of plaster scene that had been set beside it. <laughs> uh, uh, a hot fire to melt slowly. So you, know, you really don't you don't realize just what a hoof looks like until you've seen a badly sculpted version of a hoof. <laughs> At which point it's the only thing you can see. Oh, my word. That's nice armor, isn't it? I mean, Dark Rock had a bad day. Hey, dude, this is the second onesie we've seen. Mm. Second onesie we've seen today. Talk about your Jaguar one. You can have yeah. a uh, beautiful crocodile as well. Also, I the, like the, the basing on the swamp. Yeah. The basing. I, this is, yeah, go on, I like the woman who, like, the 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 tree has got, like, st- become stilts <gasps> for her. I think it's really cool. She's in this pack as well, but mm. that's almost Leshen like but there we go. <laughs> almost Leshen. Uh, but, yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Cool. It's yeah. gorgeous. I mean, you can imagine painting this so dark with brighter areas, and it's just it's, what I like about literally what Jerry said about the basing. There is quite a lot do come on the uh, basing, which yeah, scenic bases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you do want to bring them out, bring them straight into the industry. You don't need to find a separate base oh. for it. <sighs> no, you can see me, yeah. Fuck get your get your anime vibes in there as well. Mm-hmm. Way to go! Coming right for you. <laughs> Fox Force Five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, three no, of them. No. Yeah. <laughs> the detail in it is beautiful as well. Yeah. Um, the detail, the detail is absolutely stunning. I like those. They're really cool. Oh, look at that! I like, I like the idea of using things like, for example, that massive tree. You have like a tree set up on your table if you're playing role-playing games incorrectly mm. mm-hmm. uh, right. and then you remove that tree and replace it with that larger mass, almost revenant style one i think that would be amazing to see on the table for, for it i imagine people painting it using all the fluo paints oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. just like a tons of fluo effect from like mm. you know poisonous fungi mm-hmm. yeah a little bit of bioluminescence in there would be a good idea mm. that's cool yeah, that's the one. I that's really the like. one. Oh that's wow, cool. it's just so creepy and weird. That's gorgeous, yeah, isn't it's it? Going, it's going right through, the through her legs. Feet, yeah, yeah. That's when there's the, the like the 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 fingers on the hand there, where they're mm. almost like little branches, yeah. they're growing out. Uh, so I, 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 I 
some commitment to wearing high heels. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea that it's sort of like a druid, uh, maybe in a story or something, who has become too wild. And so the like the 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 wilderness around her is kind of like starting to become part of her body. Maybe she's like wild shaped just too many times or something. That'd be really cool. But I mean, her so main body looks emaciated. Mm, mm. Yeah. So is this the collaboration then? I presume they're doing it backwards. So on Cobra Mode's one, I get access to one uh, uh, particular one, and I presume I didn't know that Cobra Mode are doing one for their patrons as well. Just it's a little. Sh- it's a sheep centaur. Ah, <gasps> it's a little fluffy one. It's a metal centaur. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but they've got loads on their My Mini Factory page um, of loads of different stuff. But uh, they're, they're natural uh, forest, uh, druidy mushrooms uh, just have blown me away. Uh, yeah. The, the, the stuff on the, on the Mini Factory side is really cool. If you go to the, the store, yep. um, they have. As, as Free was saying, lots of stuff that's kind of like fairy tale, folklore yeah, based stuff. Store, is it? That's just the generic oh, right. story. Uh, yeah, you need um, to go to the top and go to like, oh, objects. Go. Objects, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, they've got stuff that's like sort of Sleepy Hollow esque stuff. Yes. So it's sort of like some weird things going off, going on in the distances somewhere. And so, uh, you know, someone's sent off to go and explore what's going on with it. So it's really, really awesome is stuff. That Goblin King. Second uh, row. Where? Second row, fourth from the left. With this one? Swords. I think yeah. it's a rat king or a, bun- a mouse, mouse king. Mouse king. Mouse king, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of caught my eye. Oh, that's oh. gorgeous. Biomech ballerina. Mm-hmm. That's very pretty. Base mm-hmm. is lovely. Mm. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. Mm. The clockwork. Oh, clock. that's beautiful, isn't it? They did a couple of Christmas things, from what I can see. Um, there's a Halloween one out there as well. Good thing. But that's a nice rubbing away. It seems like they do the same kind of thing as they as other patrons do, where they do like a month worth of releases, and then you can kind of like get them later on separately, which is pretty yeah. cool. So yeah, very nice. <gasps> Mouse that's cool. oh, well, because obviously oh. a rat king is that big, huge, massive, massive rats rat all so, yeah. combined. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. And now there's one with a pair of sabers, <laughs> pair of mm, Likey, yeah. and the fact that he's standing on minions. Mm, that's yeah, like that. double nice touch. dueling the swords. There's a particular there's there's a uh, owls one with owl shaped. So uh, third row down. There you go. Third row down. Oh, they're spooky. I like. Those. Yeah, they're yeah. beautiful, and they've got a couple of owl like creatures in there that are very. The spirits of the looking. secret sand library. Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, imagine being in a role playing game, going through a library, and these pop up, and hmm. you're just like, "Hi, we're we're looking for the librarian," and all you hear is. <laughs> but there is a time. Oh, there's even like a big owl librarian that's like the leader of them. That's cool. Yeah, that's uh, what made me think of that. There we go. That's all. There, there you go. There is a, there's cool. a couple of owls in there, which is. Uh... Oh, man. Oh, yes. Multi armed keepers of the sun. Don't library. worry. They're armless. Oh, oh. <laughs> this guy's a hoot. Oh, wow. But that's um, good. Bit. <laughs> that's I fantastic. That, wow. What design they have with the, the scroll stand floating. Mm. Yeah. This yeah. is what I mean. Really Perfect for dioramas. You know, these mm. fit into a, an, an overarching scenic so well. Yeah. But I just. Oh, the little girl with the protector. Oh, that one on strings is interesting. I haven't seen that one. That's terrifying. Striga. Mm-hmm. Striga. Very pretty. Mm-hmm. Very witcher esque as well. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Lady Serpent. I love the way that even the Nagas. Going. Yeah, Nagas need days off too. Oh, I mean, she's just chilling. Yeah, I mean, she's chilling there with a sword, and it's just like, oh, yes, traveler, of course. You, yeah. you came for the sword. Take it. I promise it's not cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding the skull of the last adventurer. The one away. in the puppet yeah. strings. Can you sing that one, Jeremy? Oh, that God, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. No. <gasps> oh. Creepy. That, that's there some nightmare feel no right there. There strings on me. <laughs> Fantastic for a horror game. But it, it's, well, it's just fits in the horror and fantasy vibe together. And it's. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh. Oh, they're oh, great. They're fab. Yeah. This is one of my missus never got her porcelain doll collection again. 
I'm going to say scary things, dolls and children in horror movies. Mm. Yeah. How you make little doll children and then the way you go. Yeah. And then double tick those boxes yeah. to creep you out. It's very Warcraft-esque. It's very well-like. Yeah. If I read, I hasten to say armour, they have a red armour and blonde hair and you've got a blood elf or something there. Pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. Cultists. Oh, cultists. Good for your Cthulhu. Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves cultists, especially their gods. No, we're actually <laughs> kicking off a Cthulhu game this weekend, which should be fun. Could oh, be really? Cool one. Yeah, although our, our GM has set it in 1980s Boston. Oh, okay. So Very me cool. being me, I'm going to be playing a uniformed police officer. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no! Wow. He's named Billy O'Hara, so it's going to be full-on Southern accent. Chowder. <laughs> <laughs> See that just tells the story for me. Mm. Perfect thing in the background. A great for RPGs, in yeah. my opinion. If you, as, as Joe says, if you were playing, or if you wanted to do a, a King Kong Arama. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, nice stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Terrific. It's, Good teams. Yeah. It's the oh, the baffling bath one's weird. Baffling weirdly uh diorama pieces, I think, are possibly my favorite simply because they are not just made for the tabletop. Yes. Uh oh, there's the hanged man. And there's a Baba Yaga. Yeah, they, they did up. they did a tarot set of characters, yeah. Did they? Nice. That would explain it. Look at that. She's having a, the bestest day ever oh, with the snakes coming out of the bath. I think so. It reminds me of Grandma Haxton Beast just screaming in the bathtub. That's petrifying, but so good. <laughs> Imagine crew, yeah. walking in the map. Walking in the map oh. in your RPG. <gasps> Fear inducing. So, <laughs> this, this one I've seen before. Um, if people go hunting on our website, um, Blinky, one of the site members. Oh yeah, yeah. Printed Peace. this, and he added uh, internal lights, sound, and smoke to this as part of a, a project. Um, and if you think this is relatively creepy, wait till you see the puppet eyes light up and yeah. turn. Thank you. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, thank you. It's it's well worth checking out. Is. Alice isn't here anymore. No. <laughs> <gasps> Lucy says you've been misbehaving. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic yeah he's just that's chilling out fantastic. scratching his back out the crows add so much to that mm. oh, that's beautiful mm-hmm. oh, he's a happy fella he is evil ruler mm-hmm. <gasps> didn't see it at the side I didn't see on the uh, the throne <gasps> yeah the guy's holding it up Oh, we can nothing, see what kind of ruler this guy is. Nothing evil about him. No. You know, that that's the guys no. who came in from Ikea to help put it together. He just never <laughs> let them go. <laughs> Gorgeous. No, Rul- nothing like rulers. scone. Uh, scone? Skulls, to tell you something. Rulers get an awfully bad rap, but, you know, they're out there day in, day out, making sure that the... Uh, the place is governed and people aren't attacked by bloodthirsty monsters in the street. Oh, I really never hear about enjoy. a lot of work they do for charity either. <laughs> I really enjoy skeletal horses and I'm glad they've gone with the, the a kind of more meaty body and a skeletal mm. head. I find skeletal horses can look a bit... It works a lot better, I think. Mm-hmm. Skeletal horses tend to look a bit weedy. That's the issue. Yes. So. Well, you've got a choice here because they, yeah. they're full on horse tree. Look, he's got tentacles in his trunk. <gasps> yeah, gotta bind that down. That's I guess that, that that's his pet, you know, squishy who's just taking out for his morning ride. Yeah. Awesome havoc on the road. It's really nice. I'd love a closer picture of him in this the back. Guy. Because yeah. he almost looked half orc tusky mm. from but I don't know if that's just because of some sort of Pink. collar. Mm. <gasps> mm. Yeah. Oh no, I think no, the way his collar he, flares he, up is he, just he's just, just, just a, that dude. Just a fine gentleman. Yep. Gorgeous. Ruffles. Mm. Lovely stuff. The Great Grimoire. Mm. Mm. You can find them on Face Page as well. <gasps> where they're listed under Great Grimoire board game, which interests me in every way, shape, and form. Mm-hmm. But I think also, that Jerry, might just be I, I need to blur out your phone number now. 
Yeah. Well done. I don't know. You do you. See your oh, face was message. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No. So that, that, that's all getting blurred. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm going to call Jerry at random times throughout the day. Yeah, be, lucky. Hello. It's, be lucky. It's rarely switched on. <laughs> So they're on Facebook as well. Fantastic. Yeah. You can go and check out all the stuff there and keep abreast of what they're doing every month. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. Definitely. Go. Definitely. The Evergreen Definitely. Pack this month. So My Mini fat- Factory and Patreon. Mm-hmm. Great grimoire. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim centre over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. Moving away from 3D printing, and to round out the show, as always, we're going to be taking a look at some Kickstarters. Yeah. So, we start off with something quick and cool and awesome. Mm. Myriad Miniatures, run by John Robertson, Mm -hmm. has teamed up with uh, Ian Miller, who a lot of people will know for his amazing artwork, from the elder days of Old Hammer and Warhammer Fantasy and beyond, and is now working. Uh, I'm sure Jerry's got there's a book over here full of his artwork. <laughs> That's what I made earlier. He's working on a Kickstarter <laughs> called Osmotic Meld, which is looking to bring the art of Ian Miller to the tabletop in miniature form. Uh-huh. Now, anyone who's seen any of Ian Miller's artwork, and you can see it here, obviously. Uh, well know that it is weird and wonderful and wacky and odd and different and unique. And so that means all of the miniatures that uh, Robertson is working on are equally as unique and fascinating and weird. Um, I really like how it's all, uh, it was really fascinating reading about this project because Robertson said, uh, this is a project that I've always wanted to do for a really long time. However, it was waiting for me to get to the right skill level in order to do it, <laughs> mm. which I thought was really good. Um, but I think, and I'm sure a lot of people you with, will agree, that the finished articles that you're seeing here um, from Robertson are absolutely fascinating and right on point with the artwork that uh, we see from, from Ian Miller there as well. <laughs> it's like Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm, I'm I'm in here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's uh, some. Uh... Tell you, it's a terrible life being a soldier <laughs> for an evil overlord. <laughs> and then I stuck my his watch up his ass. But anyway, oh. uh... <laughs> I'm the one we were all thinking of, to be yeah. fair. Uh, but yeah, I just think the amount of detail that's coming to these is just stunning. Uh, and mm. I obviously these are all very bespoke, very unique pieces. Uh, and I could see these being very much something that sort of worked into maybe someone's painting collection. So you paint these and then you display them on the mantelpiece or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I think it'd be really fun to see these dropped into sort of old hammer style games, use them in um, like Warhammer, like more timey stuff or anything like that. I think that'd be really fascinating. Maybe Sludge. play around with the concepts of them. Sludge, yeah. yes, would be very good for these. Just something a little bit weird and creepy and different. You want to go that, a little bit darker on your frost grave. Well, exactly. Yeah, very true. I think that's something that's really nice about the sculpts is that they get across, especially when you look at this this dragon here, they almost get across that kind of sharp, fine pen work yeah. that Miller's done. Like you see it in the wings in particular and the way that all the different elements of the, the sort of armor pieces have come together there as well. It feels like it's uh, almost leapt off the page, which I think is yeah. just fascinating. It's not perfectly smooth in the resin. Yeah. It's Yeah, it's got that gritty translate over. Yeah. Can, and can I also that. say, before we move on, that it's been 10 years, 12 years since Kickstarter launched. And this is proof that they can put big pictures on Kickstarter, but exactly. people choose not to. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. People are, people are idiots. People are <laughs> the worst. What people uh, normally do is they just put on the stupidly super long ones. Yes. I oh, know. yeah, those. Uh, but anyway, so, <laughs> but yes, uh, going back to uh, uh, what you were saying Sculpting. there, like all of these are hand sculpted and hmm. uh, none of them are, are going to be done through 3D print, uh, 3D rendering or anything like that. It's all going to be hand sculpted. Uh, all of the miniatures to again, uh, get across that idea of them being old school and, and old hammery are going to be then cast in metal apart from a few uh, particular elements of different Oof. miniatures, which are going to be done in resin because they're just too big to be cast in metal yeah. or, uh, or too hefty in that regard. Um, they have also said that these aren't for, as they put it, the faint of heart, I guess, mm. as well. Um, so these are going to be uh, miniatures that 
in many cases. A lot of them will probably be one or two pieces, which isn't too bad. But for some of them, especially some of the creatures like you're seeing here, they're going to be in separate pieces that you'll either have to pin uh, or be very patient with super glue, I guess. Uh, but pinning is probably going to be a key skill that you'll need to learn for these. Uh, but I think it would be worth it to you know carry on those traditional skills in uh, modeling in order to get these to the tabletop or just to show up on the mantelpiece because I think they are uh, phenomenal. I, I think they're absolutely beautiful sculpts, these. I like so, his yeah. thumb scale. Gives a good <laughs> idea. I mean, that that is Nightmare Fuel winged czar right oh, there. Oh, wow. That That's I mean, absolutely special. Spectacular. Put one of those into silver bayonet, Jerry. Yeah. Imagine that as like a haunting uh, beast ride, the, riding around the land, yeah. landscape or something. Yeah. Living suit of armor, whatever it happens to be. <laughs> Rain and hell would be another excellent oh, okay. yeah. for some yeah. of these. Because you're looking at this sort of thing here and you're just going, well, you know, why would I not? That looks, sorry, that looks like it's come from the. Um, Michael Moorcock, Elric days. Yes. GW. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to kind of wonder what night terrors the artist had to create these horrendous creations. Some fantastic imagination. I mean, well, the, these are practically borderline realistic compared to some of the stuff Abe Miller's done for the Slaves and Realms books, mm -hmm. um, which are just completely off the wall. I mean, yeah. that I could imagine seeing that in a field. Some mm -hmm. of the stuff he did in those other books is just like, mm, no. I'd be Can interested to see it painted up in that black and white style where the drawings are done. That would be fascinating, yeah. Mm. Uh, someone do a monochrome with maybe like a splash of red on set of blade or something? Yeah. Like that would be cool. You know, do it Sin City style? Yeah. It does make me think that when it, it would be really cool to see someone go back to, say, for example, some of the artwork in the, in the initial Rogue Trader books or something mm. and pick some of that out, you know, some of the iconic stuff of like Space Mint and that kind of thing, but then approach them from a modern sculpting um sort of avenue i think that'd be really fascinating to see what they did with that but um you do also have some sci-fi bits in there as well uh, so you've got your rat people and stuff like that as well so. I, I am loving the vagabond rat it is cool yeah the parasol it's great yeah. oh, i also like the guy up in the top right who's got that face like stretched out over the top of the the gas mask it's like a a, a steampunk yurikai that guy on the right <laughs> <laughs> My Imagine fighting scum ganger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, there are a whole bunch of different pledges for this one, so you can go in and uh, and pick up a, like a selection of them. So there's one mm. just based around monsters, one just based around um, characters on foot, or you can go in for some of the bigger ones and pick up like, some of the larger pieces uh, in addition to some of the, uh, the smaller ones too. Um, there's also a whole bunch of stretch goals have been unlocked because this campaign has been absurdly well funded, as you might have imagined, by the quality of the uh, the, the, the the miniatures that we're seeing here. Mm. Um, so if you want to go and pick up some extra stuff as well, they have been working on that. Like for example, the the sort of like weird mushroom men that would be perfect for turn at twenty eight. I'm just saying. Mm. So. <laughs> yes. And then that uh, skyball, which I just think looks amazing. Oh wow, That's so cool. Nice. Yeah. Six days left to go. Yeah. Six days left to go when you're uh, when you're watching this, and um, I'm sure more is going to be unlocked as the campaign continues to roll on. And hopefully, this is just the start for Myriad. Um, mm. There, Robert, this is Robertson's sort of like new little dream, and uh, hopefully, it expands and grows, and we see a lot more stuff in the future as well. Because Robertson is clearly a skilled sculptor, and I'd love to see more of that hand sculpted stuff in the future. Mm. So. Oh God, yes, it'd be so much fun to see. I just want to see more from Ian Miller. I'm sure that there's, there's plenty seeing of the, illustrations. <laughs> no, it's, it's not just that, but it's it's somebody going, I want to bring these illustrations onto the tabletop. And we've seen something similar with um Gary Chalk. Yes. Uh, some yeah. of his some of his illustrations for confrontation um are finally being produced by uh, Temple West in America. Um, is, the, so, is the Lone Wolf project still happening or is that I I, I haven't heard any more about right. it since. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully it will at some point. Um, I don't know because it, it was kicking off just before uh, Westphalia moved from England to Canada. Uh, so hopefully, but yeah, it's it's just great to see these classic illustrators uh, having their renders uh, put onto the tabletop. In, Very much so. In, in a, yeah. a style befitting the illustration, I think is the main thing. Uh, they do look much better when they're. They're sort of hand sculpted like that. They're yes. just getting, I suppose, the you know, 3D renders 
wouldn't really do the same job. You wouldn't have that grittiness to them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who's up next? Uh, so next up, uh, we're moving from the strange, twisted mind of Ian Miller and his wonderful artwork to the mind of Dave from Mini Wargaming. Uh, who, twisted. Is, who is all equally twisted and chaotic, uh, who has been working with Lazy Squire Games. Now, you may remember a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago now, we talked about The Veil Touched, mm. uh, which was a new project, sort of like a little baby of uh, of Dave's, which was uh, working to bring a new set of uh, chaotic and brutal individuals to the tabletop for you to use in your somewhat alternative grimdark armies, as well as potentially something that... Uh, Mini Wargaming and Lazy Squad Games are working on in the background as well. Um, and so this game found is now up and running. Uh, you'll have uh, just five days left to dive in and check this one out. But um, it comes with a whole bunch of PVC plastic miniatures um, using the techniques and sculpting of uh, Lazy Squire, who have done amazing work on the stuff for um, games like Wild Descent and Storm Sunder. Yeah. Those miniatures are really, really nice. Very, very well, done, well put together. And uh, yes, uh, this isn't just troops in this. It's vehicles, monsters, demons, characters. It's effectively everything you could want to make a not chaos army. Uh, I, mean, for... I can't believe it's not chaos. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the tabletop, the margarine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a, it's an absolutely stunning collection of miniatures, and uh, we've actually been seeing a whole bunch of. Um, individuals picking up and playing around with some of the prototype pieces so the prototypes are actually um done in resin i believe it was hmm. and they came in uh, individual parts but when you actually get the boxes for these they're all going to be single piece ready to go well ready to paint effectively so what you need to do is pop them out get some spray down on them and start to uh, washing and contrasting and dry brushing to your heart's content but because as a lot of people have said about these they're very detailed, but that just lends to using things like washes and stuff to bring out all of that stuff. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm never going to have to paint all of these. Well, just approach them in a, in a particular style and you'll be able to easily work through these very quickly using the likes of contrast paints, dry brushing for highlighting rather than having to individually edge highlight everything yeah. else you see. Um, there are ways and means to get around these kind of things and the details is great. <laughs> uh, the for, interesting for, thing for me yeah. is I'm not really seeing any duplicate sculpts, sculpts through all of this. Well, that is one of the other things as well, yeah. So each of the squad members is relatively unique to each other, which is pretty cool. The other thing they've done as well is obviously they've um, somewhat scaled up these uh, chaotic veil touched as well. So you you know a lot of people will see the chaos space that exist within 40K now. They're not quite as big and chunky as the Primaris ones. And so what they've done is they've kind of gone in and basically chunked these guys out to the max. Um, And so a regular human comes at around 32 millimetres which is, you know, pretty standard for nowadays for heroic sci-fi and fantasy. But then these power armored individuals then go up to about 35 mil, maybe 40 mil. Characters are up to like 45 mil. So they are towering individuals when it comes to seeing them on the battlefield, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that's really nice about these two, obviously you've got all different special weapons in there as well. And you know how I mentioned, oh, there's a whole bunch of these guys here. There's also gals in there. So they've mm. actually done them as male and female miniatures for these Um Sometimes they're mixed into the individual squads. So you have male and female troopers within the individual chaos <laughs> veil touch squads. Sometimes you have <laughs> very catch. specifically uh, themed forces as well. Uh, so, for example, you've got here, you've got all these female fighters and everything as well, which is pretty badass as well. Yeah. So, um, the Obvious. other thing that, that's nice about this, you don't have to buy the massive, huge um, pack for this, which gets you everything. You can just buy one of the war packs and it comes with the basically the 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 guts of whatever that focuses on. So for example, if it's the vehicle one, it comes with a couple of the big vehicles and then the demon engine. And then there's like an elite pack sort of built onto that, which gives you something a little bit special, a little bit different. Nice. So if you don't, if you already have, for example, a massive army of, you know, heretics, then you can throw these in alongside them uh, and they'll fit fairly well, I would imagine. Uh, especially if you wanted to do something a little bit uh, wacky and over the top. I think these would be particularly suited to being done in kind of almost like an Emperor's Children style scheme. I think that kind of purple, gold and silver would be really fascinating for these. Or maybe um, sort of blues and greens, I think would look very nice too. Uh, but yeah, they, they should lend themselves to uh, being dropped into grimdark games, maybe one page rule stuff. You could easily use them for that. Uh, and as I say, and as far as we're aware as well, I think Laser Squire and Mini Wargaming are working on something else in the future as well. So 
uh, but, keep an eye out for what they do next. Yeah, yeah. well, that was I was going to yeah. mention that slash ask um, because I know when they were talking about this originally that the idea behind it is to have two games or one game that you can play in two different ways, either as a, a standard board game or as a tabletop miniatures yeah. game. Uh, yeah. That's not in this. This is just the miniatures. No, this is side. just the miniatures now. So, nice. yeah. so I, I think what they'll probably end up doing is, I would imagine anyway, uh, we'll see one of these for the Veil Touch. We'll see another one coming up in the future for whatever the faction that would go against them would be. Yeah. And then potentially we'll see something of the game that kind of brings them all together as well in the future as well. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Choo-choo. I'm brum brum blep blep. <laughs> I'm a tank. I'm another oh, yeah. tank with those four tidy tracks that everybody loves so much on the Torox. <laughs> uh, the, these are done better because you're just yeah. seeing a little bit of them. It's not just like track unit, track unit. I'm mm. crap. Hi. It, it's not pulled its dress up. No. <laughs> right. Just got his ankles in. Well, well, there you can see, see some of the different see issues as well. with that as I have with the Torox. <laughs> It's enough room for a stick to get lost in between them. But it's enough room for the front of your vehicle to go crashing into a trench because there's a gap <laughs> between your tracks, which is the reason tracks are that long. So you can bridge trenches. Uh Jerry's a fan of the f- sake. <laughs> Big tracks. But yes, so there are loads of different war packs, loads of different things getting unlocked. In addition to all of that, as well, there's also the slightly, you know, there's the mini wargaming Dave character leading the way and everything mm. in there too. There's lots of the little kind of like nods to um, uh, friends and, and all sorts of things mm. as well there as well. The other nice thing is that there's like fluff built into all of these, um, so it's got a kind of very kind of event horizon style story where they travelled through the veil in search of something lost, lost, and mystical, and then it came back and all of them were changed. Uh, where you where we're going, we won't need eyes to see, as Samuel nice. would say. But, yes, uh, yeah. but and also would. that's a He's really damn good movie. It's an amazing movie. But yeah, uh, but yeah, fantastic so, stuff there. So. In terms of scale, they're varied, aren't they? Uh, well, yeah. As I was saying, like the the humans coming around like thirty two ish. The power armor guys are the same thirty five, and then the monsters are like beyond fifty mil. Yeah, above, really. So it, it's nothing that's not. Uh, well, there you go. There's oh, they perfect. Time. Yeah, it's it's nothing that's not kind of in uh, scale. If you're planning on using them as proxies for 40k, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. all very much in keeping with that. So, so yeah, pretty good. Yes. She's a bit big. Mm. She's a bit. She's a bit big. <laughs> is she bigger than a Mortarian? Is the question then? I have no I'd idea. Have, I'd have I'd to not. check a Mortarian, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that would require me. Knowing what size of Mortarian is, and that's never happening. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. I definitely say, obviously, I haven't had a look at the um, prototypes that they've done yet, but I've seen the prototypes for Wild Ascent and Storm Sunder in resin. And then I've seen the production copies, yeah. for Storm Sunder and um, Wild Ascent. And the comparable detail is. I mean, it's it's like ninety nine, ninety eight percent there. Yeah. So you don't you don't drop off from the mass production in the plastic. Yeah. Um, and in some respects, I think the plastic uh, was a bit more robust as well than the resin one. So, and that that's the process they're going to use with yeah. the. So it, it they've they've proven it with those previous games, and they kind of want to carry that over, which is good. So, mm. so yeah. sweet to the beat. We mm. have because we're spoiling you this week. Yeah. One final Kickstarter. I said Kickstarter. Right. Two of them are game found, and apparently that's the weight ratio at the moment. Two game found to one Kickstarter campaign. Mm-hmm. Over time, I imagine that will change. The conversion I, I, rate. Because <laughs> I, I think a lot more people are going to be converting across to game found, leaving behind yes. people yes. with their salad bars and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But this one is Purple Haze from mm. Phalanx Games, mm-hmm. uh, which is. How do they describe it? Because I know how I describe it. A cooperative game? No, I don't care about that. <laughs> Purple Haze is an immersive story game for one to four players that drops you into the heart of darkness in Vietnam. Um, I would describe it as a GM-less RPG. Nice. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. Essentially, because we have a Let's Play up for this. Myself and we James do, played yeah. it with James. Um, what I will I'll preface that with, that is what they're currently working on. However, they have had ideas and concepts and things they want to change. So that may not be 
the rules that finally get released, although obviously that's the core. Um, but the idea is you are a squad uh, or platoon of Marines in Vietnam. The idea behind it is you kind of play the sergeants with this group of greenhorns, these rookies who have been dropped in. So even though the players are playing the overarching sort of commander, they're not on the tabletop. Um, instead, you've got your squad. So you've got your riflemen, you've got your medic, you've got snipers, whoever it happens to be. And they are the people that are sort of being played throughout the game. Um, and as you go, you have to deal with the effects of essentially combat, um, but not just physical. You also have the sort of uh, psychological combat as well. So when you're playing, um, you have this tracker here, which is probably about to disappear on me. Um, and it shows how long you're out there, the combat fatigue that you will take, the stress that you will take from engagements and from stuff happening around you, uh, and then also how close you are to succeeding in your oh, right. uh, actual whatever it is you're doing, uh, which could be we played getting back to base. Uh, all of the, the maps are based on actual US uh, Army maps that were used for Vietnam. Um, oh, wow. so, so it's cool. it's got that sort of topography and, and you you only really are seeing what the squad would have access to when they yeah. were sent in there. Um, but you can be in playing through um, and then have to deal with the effects of, of everything that's kicking off around you. Um, I really want to see the tracker. If I go to, let's go to our Let's Play because I know we have the tracker in there. Uh, don't care about that. Don't care about me. Jerryception. Sure. There we go. That's what I want. Bye, Bob. Um, so, interesting <laughs> thing is, as you can see, every time you do something, it takes a length of time, and it's divided into hours on the top of the tracker and quarter hours on the bottom. So, if, for example, somebody has been shot up like a terrible, terrible man, uh, you may want to stop and render assistance, which could take 45 minutes. And maybe that pushes you another hour long. Every grid reference will take you like a, an hour or so to go through, depending, because you've also got, you can see these little symbols below it. Green so you've types. got village, mountain, forest, oh. hills, and jungleism. Mm. And so you know that traveling a grid reference will take you an hour plus or minus whatever terrain you're in. Mm -hmm. The longer you're in there, the more likely you are to run into uh, VC ambush. Um, at the moment, it's kind of defined where when you hit the sort of end part, you're always going to get sort of ambushes. Um, if you camp, you can push the fatigue back on your players, but then you have to say how long you're going to spend and you have to roll a die for every hour you're out there waiting for somebody to come storming out of the jungle. And it might not be a VC ambush. It could be a wild elephant. Uh, it could be. I think you guys got attacked by a one, may have got may cat. have got attacked by a tiger at one point. Yeah, <laughs> um, that sort of thing. Wow. So, so you've got a, a an interesting mechanic where you have to either decide to push on, but the more you push on, the worse it gets for your your squad as mm -hmm. you become fatigued over time. Or you can set up a nice little camp and have a picnic, but then you're just <laughs> leaving yourself exposed to all the hell that comes towards you. Um, so fascinating beginning. A uh, good core of a game. Really interested to see where they go and where they develop. I know they've got uh, some expansions in here already, um, but some of the things we were talking about when, right. I, when I chatted to them um, was that last tracker uh, where it goes, you know, you hit so far and then you definitely are going to get like three VC sort of ambushes in a row. Um, we didn't because we got back to base camp and, and avoided that nightmare. <laughs> but I suggested, you know, double their board and then randomly, you know, put all of those. Idea. And then yeah. you, you don't know until you get into them and you flip them as to whether or not there is actually an ambush in there. Um, but it, it was it was good fun playing through. It adds to the danger of the situation. Exactly. If yeah. you know, if you know the last three are always going to be an ambush, then you're trying to get in a position you can where plan you, ahead. you plan ahead. If you don't know what you're going to hit when you flip, uh, then that changes things remarkably so time yeah, will tell way, how this sort of comes together yeah another way they could do it is that depending on how far you move along the track you draw a number of cards 
So the more you're trying to do, the more noise you're making through the jungle. So the more likely it is you'll draw a card from the deck that is mm. the VC ambush. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, they're already they're already things like encounter cards built in, so it mm. wouldn't be yeah. beyond the realm's possibility to to do it something yeah. along. Do you have to make choices when the encounter cards come up and that kind of thing, or is it very binary in that respect? Or? Um, uh, branching storylines. When the encounter cards come out. It's it's more or less fixed because that's what's happening at this point. Right. But oh, okay. It's what leads you into that point is where you make your choices. So, for right. example, it wasn't in the game we played because it's still a concept that they're working on. But we had our little squad of of uh, greenhorns, and we had like a, a grenadier, a medic, a sniper, and a couple of you know regular riflemen. Now we kind of were generally going okay. I'm going to be in front. But when you're actually plowing through the jungle, you would then go, okay, this will be our scout team in front. Then next will be such and such. And then like, here, here's whoever's bringing up the rear. Um, and then when an encounter card is played, then it, it will specifically go, you walk into this. So maybe the two guys up front get hit, or maybe the ambush comes from behind. or Maybe the tiger jumps into the middle of the, you know, line of, of march. So you are having to make those decisions. And that's why you're playing as somebody who's not in the game. You're playing this this overall commander, sergeant, whoever it happens to be, um, giving the instructions, because then it's 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 up to you as the, the players to decide the best way to dispose of the resources you have in your squad to actually achieve what you, you want to achieve. Uh, for example, we decided we weren't going to go looking for the other downed Huey. Uh, we were just going to beat a hasty retreat back to the camp and try and keep all our guys alive. <laughs> yeah, but you that... did run through an abandoned village where you were given multiple storyline choices. Yes, yeah. Um, oh, cool. But yeah. but there were other grid references that mm. are already on the map going, well, these could be potentially where the Hueys went down. You could explore them. We chose not to. Also in the game, in some of the scenarios, they're talking about having hidden ones. So you may not realize until you walk into a grid uh, reference and then you know reveal the card that there is something there so you can't always just go by That's the way neat. the tokens yeah. are um but yeah they, they've a lot of plans for it. it'll be interesting to see how it develops and, and what actually gets to the board because there were some there were even some things like because they've got these lovely um grid reference maps you think you're in e86 but in actual fact you're in F82. Um, you think you've gone jungle. down in one part of the jungle, mm. but you've gone somewhere else. But they're still trying to work out how that would work because without a GM, yeah, yeah, it's difficult to work on that one. Um, it may just be pushing people back a certain number of grid references, and it, it'll, it won't become apparent until later on. So, it's a, a that one's a lovely idea. I don't know if they'll actually be able to do it without adding so many mechanics that it bogs the game down. So sure. it might just get tossed to the side. Um, but yeah, definitely interesting one to take a look at um for a narrative board game or a, a gmless rpg if you Phal want to call yeah. it that phalanx have been doing a really good job of creating very different and unique board games that deal with yes. really good periods of history and sort of re recreating them which i think is really nice so this what this seems like a very good way of playing out vietnam in a a different way yeah cool. and uh, yeah. i believe they're giving one percent of the proceeds to uh, vietnam vet uh, oh wow um, charity nice. as well so um you know it's it's nice that they're giving back in a way as well because it's still obviously to vietnam vets in america it's still something that they're living with because it's not that long ago um so yeah purple he is from uh phalanx Very games cool. definitely a different type of board game and one that's worth checking out just check out our Let's Play. It's real. I think it's like an hour long, so you'll be able to see yeah, me and Shay yeah. ham fist our ways through it in short <laughs> order. Uh, I, I give, it gives you at least a rough idea of where they currently are, and they've got the tabletop simulator version as well. If you fancy actually giving it a try yourself, so yeah, let us know what you think. That about wraps us up for today, though. We shall return this day next week. However, if you want to join us on Sunday morning, you can come across to ontabletop.com, uh, join our Cult of Games and jump into the XLBS where we have a bit more of a prosaic waffle about the hobby and things tangentially attached to that. I'm also going to remind people that they can win 
this. Oh, oh. oh. all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so well, if you, if you want to be able to the chance to God. win the One Ring bundle, oh, uh, yes. then don't forget to comment below and be a subscriber to the channel. Uh, otherwise, we will see you in the comments and see you again next Friday. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.